Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Edge of Legend here on Nat20 Productions, official on Twitch. And I'm very excited, uh, and I hope you all are excited too. We got some uh, got some new adventurers with us uh, this evening, uh, and uh, I think we should do a quick introduction and a quick recap. So, starting off, let's start off with uh, the new the new uh, meet. Uh, Wes, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Uh, Hello, I am Wes. Uh, I am a he, him, uh, and I play Dragon Targir, who is also he, him. I'm very excited to join the cast, and thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah. Also, huge uh, thank you for the raid at the top. Blue Suit, thank you so much for raiding us. Love to see you in in the chat. Um... Uh, let's see. Next up, I'm getting so distracted. Next up, we got uh, Sydney. Sydney, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, what your pronouns are, and also tell us wh- what is this? Hello, my name is Sydney Rubino. I play Alona, the half of Cloister Cleric, and my pronouns are she, her. And what happened with this? Sephora sent me a gift, and I drew all over my face. <laughs> and I got really excited. <laughs> this has nothing to do with my character. <laughs> this is just me. <laughs> well. Yeah. Last and certain, not least, Sam. Please, Sam, tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello, I am Sam, and uh, I just did the tentacle dance for the tentacle raid. Um, and I play Ichipo Tampapakui, also known as La Pacifica Dorita, and our pronouns are she/her. And also, I forgot Frog, but I'm I'm gonna get Frog later, so stay tuned. Uh, West Frog is my frog mug. Yes, Frog is the best mug. Thank you for letting me know, because I was like, wait, frog? There's a frog? Where's frog? Frog. With a U. Frog, yeah, with a... Yeah. Oh, frog. With an U. With like a umlaut over the... Yeah. <laughs> frog. Frog. <laughs> uh, well, that just leaves little old me. My name is PJ. I am the GM for Edge of Legend and Nat Twin Productions Official. My pronouns are he, him. I'll be playing everyone and everything in between. And now a quick recap before we get into it i'm very excited okay so uh the week before we went dark we uh wrapped up the amazing tale of the case of the imperial tiger uh a lot happened if you haven't had a chance already to catch the episode or the youtube or the recap go to youtube uh slash nat 20 prods to check that out um basically there was a giant battle for the capital and the uh the tigers of uh, Wu's uh, wrote an amazing doctrine, became the empress, the first female empress of Shin history, Empress Wu herself. Uh, meanwhile, as they're fighting off an army of wormkin and imperial soldiers, the heroes uh, fly on the back of a dragon horse all the way to a crater where the e- where the emperor was trying to eat the dragon goddess by absorbing all of Salvamat's life force, stopping the ritual. Uh, cause a massive fight between dragons to break up. Yes, dramatic music. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> As the emperor drained the life force of Salamat, the goddess of the land of Shin and survival, Rufa said, the weight of duty is heavy indeed and stood up marked by Salamat herself. He transformed into an imperial sovereign dragon of the land. And as the two became massive dragons of their home, they took to the sky in mortal combat. Strikes, pierced scales, and breath weapons destroyed mines. But at the very end, the two battled, duking it out, flying at the speed of sound, until Rufa was able to grab him and crater the dragon to the earth, continuing his pummeling strikes. And at this moment, the dragon emperor himself, Shin Yi, sunk his fangs deep into Rufa's dragon neck, tearing at the neck meat that pounded and pulsed. And in this moment, seeing only one recourse, Rufa hooks the arm, cradles the neck and flies into the stratosphere with the emperor on his very shoulders. And as he takes a moment to look at the space in the world below him, a smile crosses his lips. This is it. And he comes comboting back to earth with a dragon god on his shoulders until he buries himself and this evil emperor deep into the trenches of the ocean, killing the cruel emperor god. And in doing so, he ascends himself to becoming the one, the only, the most fabulous guardian in all of Shin. So that anyone in Shin that needs help, 
he is there. When someone is starving, he is with them. When someone needs a brighter tomorrow, he is the one with a golden lasso chaining the horizon and pulling it close so the sun can be brighter and brighter. And in this moment, he says his farewells and his goodbyes to everyone. Because he can't leave his homeland now. He has bound the land, his people. He's bound to Salomar. And with that moment, the heroes paid respects, saluted a very brave and very fabulous hero. And Rufa stepped over the edge of legend, and became a myth himself. And that's where we start off today's episode. It's been about a week, a very ephemeral week since Rufa, the hero of Shin, the fabulous one, the golden imperial dragon, became as such. Having gone there originally to look for Tobias Raphaelis, the man who could potentially be the martyr to save the world from destruction, albeit a reluctant one, since he never wanted to be one and was born into it, kind of against his own will, he has absconded into the world somewhere with a few hints, but no leads. The players, the heroes of tomorrow, reconvene at the order of the Platinum Hammer. Far across the ocean, a massive jewel of an island stands with the Sarkhan Tower, this beautiful building made entirely of platinum, shines and reflects the light for all the world to see, a beacon of hope, a beacon of strength, a bastion to anyone who needs it. And as the boats come into the dock, the heroes disembark back to the third ring of three or four rings of defenses. Clerics, paladins, champions, heroes, warriors of all kinds are now recollected here. And it's at this point that the heroes, both Alona and Ichi, are going to find a good place to figure out what to do next. Maybe it's as Intense as doing research, or maybe it's as simple as getting a drink or going fishing. So heroes of tomorrow, what do you do today? Um, Alona's gonna wake up from where they're, they're letting them stay in the Platinum Hammer and um, immediately head to the library. Alona got, what was the name of the book that you gave me, PJ? A Treatises of Dragons. That gonna go to gonna go to the library and investigate that okay okay sam what are you doing ichi has gone to whoever their the purveyor of their you know their stay and is asking them some questions uh who who is it that has arranged for accommodations or who's heading up this like the innkeeper or wherever we're staying at the Platinum Hammer. Sure, sure. Well, you are welcome to stay uh, in one of three places, any tavern uh, within the second ring. You're also welcome to stay in the barracks, or um, if you'd like to, you can see about staying in the Sarkon directly with the five grand Platinum Hammers themselves. Where did we stay last time? We didn't really. Yeah, I don't think we, there was enough time passing for that, was there? Uh, we okay. kind of showed up and then just, then it got real, real fast. Uh, okay, instead, I think Ichi's wandering the yard where she saw, um, uh, where she asked people about the food stands before and just hoping to run into somebody to talk to, a local. Is your, is your girlfriend there? I don't know, PJ. Friend? <laughs> girlfriend or them friend? Is your girlfriend or them? Friend? Uh, that they, they are she, her pronouns. Nice girlfriend. Yes. Uh, so you're going to the food stands and just kind of enjoying the local fare. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking for someone to talk to, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um. Let me get that up in a second. Okay. Here we go. Uh. Yeah. You absolutely will see Chamama uh, Guatemoc, the half orc uh, champion of. It's Papa Lotto. I'm going to butch that every time. My apologies. Uh, it's Papa Lotto. 
the goddess of sacrifice. Uh, she seems to be adorned in bright feathers and a bunch of uh, other uh, special uh, designs. Um, but really fast, uh, as you're talking to her, someone familiar uh, shows up. Uh, Joe, if we could just do a quick, uh, oh. <laughs> quick adjustment <laughs> of the panels. There Percy we go. Sydney. Yep. <laughs> yep. So you are joined by Shonabis. Feels like you haven't seen her in uh, forever, but you know that she was there. She was there along the way, just busy doing stuff, you know, like she does. So Shonabis and Ichi and Chamama are getting uh, food. Is there anything specifically that you'd like to say, Sam? Yes, Ichi will have picked up some. So have you ever seen where like they put strawberries on a skewer and then dip them in like sugar syrup and then the sugar syrup hardens and gets all crunchy and it's like crunchy glass made of sugar over the strawberries. Someone say you've seen that, right? Someone. Yeah. Knows. All right, good. Ichi has three of those and she walks over to the other two and hands one to Shionibus and hands one to her, her new friend and says, um, y'all just want to like sit on a hill and look at the clouds. Who are you and what did you do with Ichi? Well, I mean, I can look at clouds right what do you mean i i mean yeah that's cool that's uh, you okay not that you look at clouds like a weird thing but like you're usually like ichi smash like you know i'm totally fine i don't know what you're talking about i no i'm totally fine i just you know like clouds can smash too right no, never mind. I'm just, I'll be over here. She's going to trudge up the hill. <laughs> I'll follow after. Okay. Uh, as you are trudging up the hill, I would like... Hmm, how do I want to do this? I'll go that way. Okay. Check. <laughs> so, <up> the hill. <laughs> I want uh, Sam and Sionibus to make a reflex save. Ah. And Wes, I want you to also make a reflex save. Oh, God. I don't have dice out. I don't have my character sheet out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn. That was a, a four guys. on the die face. So I imagine it's not going to happen. That oh, no. is a, that's a 28 for me. Nice. Right, 28. Oh, shit. Um, I have, guys, I haven't rolled a, roll, a d20 in like a month. You said okay. reflex? Mm-hmm. That's a 21. 21, 28. Mine was I'm a guessing 15. That 15? Awesome. So, as you're walking up the hill, having a great time, uh, you suddenly hear this Thunk, 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 thunk. And as you look to the reaction, as you look, you see uh, an entire volley of archers just firing in once, and then seeing you and panicking, going, Duck! <laughs> and then they go, What? No, not you! And then you see running towards you this six foot tall, blue skinned man as arrows are chasing him like hounds of hell. Uh, and there is also a man chasing the arrows, chasing the man in blue. He's got a bow and arrow in one hand and a dagger in the other. And he is just shouting, if you want to let her now to hunt, you got to let her now to kill. And he is chasing this guy towards your direction. This big blue skinned man with long white hair and braids is just panic running as he throws the dagger and it goes wide over this gentleman's shoulder you hear the volley fire from the back going, we're just practicing. And then this man come running up says, it's never practice when it's a hunt. And at this point in time, you all collide. 
so much that I hit my microphone. <laughs> hey yo. Oh. Uh. Uh. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, I guess I'll kind of like look back to the guy who's chasing me. <laughs> you see this guy, long beard, uh, like shaved head and like uh, kind of pulled back in a ponytail covered in, in, in face tattoos, wearing nothing but like heavy hide and armor. Uh, he's got two bows strapped to his back, one in his hand. He's pulling out a new dagger um, and you know him as the Huntsmaster of Shulg, and he is just chasing after you, going, you want to learn how to hunt, laddie? This is how we fucking hunt! And he's just chasing you. Uh, all right, so I guess at that point, um, after being terrified by all the arrows and uh, the daggers being thrown at me, uh, I'll pull up my sword and be like, well, we learned to hunt back! <laughs> And yeah, I'll just, I'll pull out my sword and just be like standing next to this group of people that I've just run into, uh, ready Ichi, to fight back. Ichi's going to say to Shionobis, they're hunting back. Is that where baby back ribs come from? You know, you might be right. It would make sense, you know? Uh, okay, Hi, I'm going to get out my weapon. <laughs> At this point, Dragon would have probably dropped his guard a little bit just to look back and be like, baby back ribs. He's just very confused by that statement. You're not living, bud, until you've had baby back ribs. <laughs> so you pull out your weapon. Uh, Shionibis, are you, are you joining uh, with your bow? Yeah, I'll dock an arrow. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you you realize, Wes, uh, you now have two new allies flanking your rear. Uh, as the archers doing the volley shots just kind of put their weapon away, but this guy with the dagger and the bow keeps chasing. Eventually, you see he's joined, running like military style, by a woman with long golden braided locks, blue runic tattoos over like one half of her face. Again, heavy hide and plate mail, boots laced up with, with fur and leather. And she's got like a mace in one hand and a shield in the other. And she's just screaming at you. She's like, to die in honor, to die in combat is honor indeed. The honor shall only end when you're dead. And they run up to you and raise their weapons and this bright light starts to shine off them. What do you do? Okay. Uh, a bright light starts to shine off them. I'm just going to yell back at them. I already did that and it didn't stick. And I'm going to, I guess, try to strike the first person that comes near me. Okay. I want you to give me your choice of first a diplomacy or an intimidation role. Okay. Uh, let's go intimidation. Okay. Uh, okay. So that is a 25. Okay. Okay. Very good. So you, you shout that. Uh, roll to hit with a plus two. Um, Shionibus, give me a religion check. Why? You know I'm not good at these. <laughs> or a society check. I'll do society. <laughs> there you go. Uh, 23 to hit. 23 to hit. Okay. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. Cool, cool, cool. So as you say... I died once, it didn't work, or whatever. And you strike, the woman goes, what do you mean? And as a sword comes in, she pulls up her shield really quick and just checks it. Uh, and, and she's not even raising her weapon. She's just blocking it, looking very confused. She one of us, you recognize, uh, standing in front of you, uh, one, let's get the name right here. In my notes, these are old notes. I have to go all the way back to find them. Ah, uh, here we go. Nope, wrong one. Her name is Iva. Here we go. Iva Shogdaughter. She was a, uh, the Svigar shield maiden who is not only uh, a warrior of Shog, but she is one of the owners of one of the world's predominant monster hunting guilds. And the man next to her is just a. Uh, one of the members of the Platinum Hammer who appears to be just a warrior of Shulg who is very much on the philosophy of the hunt. Oh, 
Okay. Right. <laughs> Got it. I pissed off some interesting people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sam. Uh, give me a give me a gladiator lore check. Hell Ooh. yeah. <laughs> When's the last time you used that? I don't know. Eighteen. 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 You recognize uh, that the huntsman, the hunt master of Shalg, used to be a traveling gladiator uh, <gasps> known for his insane stunts uh, until he uh, accidentally killed a man in the ring, repented oh. with a heavy heart, and then learned about the way of the hunt. Uh, and ever since then, no one has seen him in like 10 years. So is this like, am I getting vibes that these people are trying to murder dragon or are they like harassing him everyone can give me a perception check on that I would actually love to know that too <laughs> 29 uh let's say 23 24 so 23, 24, and I'm so sorry, Sam. What was yours again? 29. 29. Very so, so you look uh, between these two figures, and you're trying to figure out, are they are trying to kill him? What are they doing exactly? Uh, and you start to realize that uh, Shilg's daughter, Iva uh, Shilg's daughter, is first of all taking a massive interest in the fact that this guy said he just died and it didn't work. That's weird. Uh, but also, she looks like from her stance that she wants to maybe teach him something. The hunts master, he also wants to teach him something. But you're getting a vibe that he is not. He's a few rocks shy of a quarry, if you know what I mean. Oh, oh my God, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Not this music, Joe. Oh, I love it. I actually love this music. Thank you see, so good. good. You see in his left eye, you see what looks like this animation of a bow being strung, pulled back, and fired on repeat. And from it, you sense this heavy fey magic as the huntsman is just like, he is in three dimensions right now. He's just like, yeah, I'm going to train you how to be a huntsman. I see devils everywhere. Who wants a raspberry lemonade? Ichi, Ichi goes, oh, this is some bullshit. Okay. <laughs> she, she's going to drop her hammer and say, all right, stop, stop, stop. She's going to pull out her, her strawberry um, skewer full of crunchy, delicious strawberries and point it towards the guy and say, on guard. And by that, uh -huh. I mean, eat this. Lassie, you think I'm a weak opponent. I have never lost to a strawberry in my life. He drops his weapons. And prove to me that you're not a coward. You see him turn into a mouse as he jumps onto the strawberry. With a loud squeak and chirp, he runs around it, just eating it like a corn cob. And then eventually, poof, he turns back into his normal body. He goes, there, I've conquered your strawberry. I am the hunts master. Any prey I have, I transform into the natural predator of the prey. And then he like knocks a strawberry out of her hand. She's like, I got you, strawberry. You're mine. I kicked your ass. So now I need you to be a predator of the most dangerous quarry known to man. Human beings. Let's no, go. No, 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 human uh, beings. No, not not today. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, yeah. um, I hear there's a convention for that somewhere nearby. Anyway, um, no. The most dangerous prey known to man yeah. is my hunger. Because you just ate my strawberries. Go get me more. The hunt is on for strawberries. I've never lost a strawberry once. He puts away his bow and he kind of like starts to look in the air and get in the wind direction. He goes... I have a target look. I'll be right back, lassie, with your strawberries. And he just starts running off like a man possessed. That worked, weirdly. Uh, so, what's your name? 
I, I, I'm, I would say that I've still got the sword on her shield, and I'm just like sitting there watching this whole situation unfold. Uh, were you talking to me? Were, yeah. Speaking to me. Yeah. Um, and I'll just kind of pull the sword back. I'm. My name is Dragon. Uh, who are you? Um, I'm Ichi Pukton Papakui, uh, but you can call me La Pacifica Dorita. Uh, usually when they announce it, they say it in a lot more deep, dramatic voice. But that's not my voice, so I wouldn't do that. Um, you have a lot of name. I, sh I really do. I earned it. This is Shionis. Shiona. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm, I say her name all the time. And I, he just kind of like keeps looking back to the, 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 the shield, uh, the shield lady and just like steps cautiously away while still holding his sword up and like goes to shake everyone's like arm. Ichi clocks the lady and she's like, you can wait. We're, we're busy. Pleasure I'll to meet all of you. Sorry for running into you like that. Okay, I was just gonna look at the clouds. Um, what should we do now, Shionibus? Um, I don't, I, I don't really no, you know, we don't meet a lot of new people, like, often, you know? I mean, I guess That aren't do. trying to kill us. Yeah, exactly. Um, ugh, I mean, did you still want to watch Clouds? Well, I mean, your, you don't have any strawberries left. In your professional opinion, as somebody who uses arrows, do you think if we stay on this hill to look at Clouds, we're going to get arrowed? I'm going to look at the sky. As like seeing like trajectory of where the arrows were, came from. Can I tell if we're gonna get hit? Yeah, give me a perception check. Uh, twenty-five. Five. Yeah. Um, the minute they do another volley and just increase their their height by like ten degrees, you're easily in range of getting shot. Um. Maybe like not this hill. Okay. Uh, maybe like one over, because definitely don't want to get like you know arrowed. I've already like almost died quite a few times. I don't need another one. Yeah, yeah. We should. We should just go because then that guy will have to look for me, and his quest will not be complete, which will distract him further. And it feels like that's just what he wants. Seems like uh, that's true. Does he have a reward? Do we yeah, need, like, a they, reward for him? Why are they chasing you? I honestly don't know. Hmm. Do you, uh, you don't know why you're being chased? I, out of curiosity, do I know why they're chasing <laughs> me? Have I stolen something, or...? Very good question. You yes. know that um, your travels kind of led you stumbling to this location. You know that Shalk, the, the, the god of the hunt, Mm -hmm. uh, is someone that is a, a familiar name to your past. Everything else is kind of muddy, but that you know very clearly. Okay. Upon meeting the hunts master and uh, I have a Shulk daughter, they're like, oh, you want to be a hunter, clearly. And you're like, that's probably not it at all. And whatever you would feel in that case. But Iva definitely looks you up and down and goes, oh, wait a minute. I recognize that braiding. The blue skin I don't get, but you're definitely one of my people. And with that, the game just took off all right and i'll just look to her name's isla iva iva um it's it, it, it remind me of the name of the god again <laughs> shog shog uh i went to the temple of shog and met these two individuals and they decided to teach me hunting by hunting me as I tried to explain earlier, I don't need to be taught how to hunt. I know how to hunt. But, but you look like a just a wee baby lad. You don't look like you've had enough experience to be a good hunter. I am older than I look. So what, you're like 18, 19 years old, little fella. And you could tell just he's like, just kind of gritting his teeth. 
I have been on this land for 34 years. 34! Oh, oh, we're rounding up now. Okay, well. Drop that skin uh, routine. Right, let, let all, I even know how to handle that. I get the crow's feet from all the ice travels. Wow. Can we, how about this? How about we go hunt an ale? Can we hunt down a tavern and have an ale? That I can do. There's actually a wonderful Everly Grace Tavern on site. I have not had a chance to go to quite a while. So I'm down if you are, sure. Great, because I haven't had a drink in ages. Sounds like <sighs> a spot. By the way, she turns directly to face Shionibis. I've heard rumors about you. She's and I've heard the same us. about you. That's Ichi. She's not. What? I didn't hear the, the, the wheel ask. What'd you say? Nothing. Oh. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, she, she continues to say that she heard about uh, the Avatar of Death, the, the Slayer of the Sand, this, this, this almost ephemeral legend of this princess and punisher of Nubia. And she's just like, I want to hear all your stories. And if you ever want to take a mark from my hunting organization, We'll, we'll, give you, we'll give you a 25% uh, gold return for, for the mark. Hmm. I might take you up on that offer sometime. Well, let's go get a pint, because if I'm not hunting, I'm probably going to be drinking. And I'll buy all of you a drink uh, as an apology for running into you. So it's, that one was on me. Been a very profitable cloud viewing exercise. I agree with that. I'm gonna start walking. Yes. Uh, cutting over to Alona. Uh, so you're doing the research on the treatises. Um, are you in the library with um, uh, the, the 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 librarian with the? Oh gosh, hold on. I'm gonna get her actual name. So Janelle Stokes, the human cleric of Leifer and Falkland. From New Jack City, carrying her side piece. Absolutely. All right. Uh, all right. So give me your choice, society, religion, or perception check on this book. No, I'm, you know I'm going to go with religion. Mm -hmm. You know. I have to. My, my, my dummy sick um, mod, is, is. I just have to. <laughs> Ah, hero point. Too soon. I don't care. Oh, wow. That's okay. I just said dummy thick mod, and then I just rolled a four. <laughs> oh, no. Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! I'm so into this book, man. I rolled a 19. A 19 on the die face? 19 on the die face. That makes it a 33. Holy crap. Okay. So, you start looking through... Uh, you start looking at the um, the book. It is extensive. It is literally uh, 15,000 years of the life of dragons in Shin and the world. Not only do they include uh, the divine pantheon of dragons like Azamat and uh, Tarsamat before she fell and with very great detail after she fell. You also see details about like Tianglong and Guolong and all of the, like the divine dragons of Shin locally. You see everything about the great history that led up to the Great Dragon War. And then you start noticing something interesting. In every year, they categorize and census the names of all the dragons living. And then you notice right around just before the end of the Great Dragon War, a few names are no longer being included on the great dragon census what are those names pj <laughs> so you notice that Tramont is not no not on the the list you notice uh Torinmat is not on the list. T-O-R-I-N-M-A-T. 
Yeah, 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 thanks. No problem. Uh, and Betro is B E T R O. You see Gulag Mot, G O L O G Mot. And then you notice the name Koramat is no longer listed in the great census. Now, you know that Koramat is one of the first divine pantheon of dragons that came after Asmat and Tarzamat entered from the astrogenic line. A dragon god of corruption, poison, venom. Around the end of the Great Dragon War, you seemed to notice that he goes missing, if not, dies, as does these three names. There's countless others, countless other bestial dragons, the mortal dragons made from Azamat and Tarzamat themselves, separately, D- dozens, if not hundreds of them. But divine dragons start disappearing towards the end of the war. So Alona can assume that from this, either he, he just disappeared entirely or he went into hiding. Wait, hold up. Did we... Help my brain. Did we interact with Cormat? We did, right? At some point? No? Hmm. Nope. Okay. Reap Psyche, I'm sorry. I don't know about the one that we stabbed in an eye like a sucker. Um, <clears throat> okay. Is there a place that Alona would know about that um has... It is like is like an Elysium for dragons? Um, because I know that the greater pantheon of the world that Alona subscribes to, they're like in another dimension or something, and they've got Azamat in there. Um, but there is there like a place known for the rest of the dragon pantheon that they all hang out on? More or less, not really. You you have heard one theory that suggests that a lot of the dragons, when they die, they go back to Azamat or Tarzamat, depending on their nature of origin. You've heard some rejoin Vigilmot in the greater cosmic awareness of all things. Some, um, depending on how old and powerful they are, die and go back to the realm of magic where their energies were taken from at one point. Hard to say, really. Uh, we never met Koromat. That was the Jasper's game day crew that met Koromat. Right. Okay not information we need right now um okay so uh, all right listen um Alona's gonna flip through this book she's just looking at all this this is information she's going to absolutely take down but is there anything else in this book that is pertinent to maybe I don't know Tobias the fact that he has to give up his life to save world correlation at all no you do see one thing noticing azamat's grief at the loss of some of his more draconic children and brethren you also notice when uh kind of it's it states when the first member of the cycle was canonized and when and, and kind of what that atrocity was it was talking about some great uh, flood of fire that rose from the seas and almost blotted out the sun. Uh, and the person was in charge of stopping this, you know, to death if necessary. So the first cycle started like 10,000 years ago? Yeah, approximately, give or take. Okay. Got it. Well, Alona's going to close this book. She's going to put her head down on the book because she's tired. Um, and she's going to wonder where the fuck her friends are. Yeah. <laughs> because they time- were supposed to be here an hour ago. Yeah, at this time, you see a rosy-cheeked Morel come running in very loudly going, Alona, Alona. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I know it's a library. Oh, be quiet. Alona, Alona. Hey, hey, listen. We the um you start over. So we found a new guy. He's blue, like not sad, like his skin is blue, 
like a blueberry. It's really cool. And he's buying everyone drinks. And Shiona Bates is getting very drunk. And we're at the Everly Grace Tavern. And you should come with us. Well, I mean, I don't know if she's drunk. It's hard to tell. She just does that like, I'm Shiona Bates. Anyway, I've had a few. You should come join us. Uh, okay, Morel. Um, this new person, uh, where did you find him? Uh, well, I didn't find him. Well, they found him in a shooting alley being chased by the master huntsman of Shog. Yeah, like you do, yeah. What? Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't there. Why was Alona immediately grabs, grabs up all of her books and starts shuffling out, starts murmuring, why was he being hunted by Shog? Is he like a new type of prey? Why is he blue? I can't wait to find out about this cool new person. <laughs> Walks the tavern. <laughs> All right, well, as we're walking to the tavern, let's set the scene for what that tavern's going to look like. The three of you go to the Everly Grace Tavern, and you see the holy symbols of Rochelle, the goddess of the working woman, and bartenders all over the place. Right now, it's a dull, not, not boring, just a low hum of a vibe. There's a few bartenders behind the bar, a few walking around delivering drinks. Uh, there's a live uh, comedian who uh, is just kind of doing some crowd work. What do you do? Are we, I imagine we are entering this scene like in situ, perhaps we've been drinking for a while and we're at a table. So maybe camera pans in on Ichi saying, and then he turned into a God, I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that was, uh, He's not with us anymore, but now we're here. Targir's eyes are just, uh, or, uh, Dragon's eyes are just huge, just listening to this story and drink, like drinking, just like, that was the most amazing story I've ever heard. If I had been on that adventure, I would tell that story at every tavern I go to. That's amazing. That's a good idea. I mean, this is kind of the first tavern. We've been no, we we've had to have been in a tavern in the past week. I must have been to you a know lot I of like taverns. to drink. Yeah. Yeah, if I can't remember, that's it's probably been a lot of taverns. Do you have more stories? And I just like hold my finger up for another round like of drinks. Yeah, my uncle's a frog. Oh, Alona. <laughs> uncle's a frog. <laughs> Hero point. Uh Alona, Alona, come sit. Ilona shuffles in with Morel and just like looks, just looks the new guy over and is like, Why are you blue? Just, Ilona, you, you can't, can't just ask, just why, ask why people are blue. blue. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hero uh, point! Yes! <laughs> Thank you for that. I um, ate too many blueberries. That's not how that works. How do you that know? Work? Have you eaten too many blueberries before? Um, probably on one occasion, but no, no, no. What everything I know about the medical field says that that's not how that works. Uh, Alona scans him over. Perception check on Dragon. <laughs> sure. Uh, first of all, Wes, do you do you uh, uh, consent to the consent. perception? Of oh, absolutely. Okay, okay. of course. You shall not perceive me. Do you perceive me? <laughs> Don't know why everyone's Scottish today. What have you known that? Oh, not the worst. Um, that's a 17. A 17. Uh, you see his uh, very blue skin. Um, you see like his yellow eyes, like the red kind of rim. They're very intense. Uh, the, the white, uh, very, very bleached white hair with like the Spygar braids. Um, Wes, is there anything a 17 you feel would tell you about yourself to her? What, what, do, you, what do you feel that would describe? Um, I mean, it, it, you would definitely get something along the lines of something having to do with potentially necromancy or it, there, there's just something unnatural, I would say, about the form. This is not something that would no, like is normal to nature. Like you, he didn't come out this way, <laughs> if that makes sense. Got it. Yeah. All right. Alona notices that there's something more to you and she goes fascinating um she starts writing in her notebook she's like okay so this is dragon 
This is Alona, by the way. I don't think yeah. she like said her name or anything before she started cataloging you. That's all right. And I get that questions big one all the time. back there, Morel. Hello, I'm Morel. Well, nice to meet you, mate. At the side of Morel, like he's gonna stand up as tall as he possibly can and like puff out his chest a little bit. Dragon, good to meet you, and like stick out his arm. <laughs> he goes to shake your hand, like hand to hand. Are you doing like the forearm thing? The forearm thing, yeah. He goes like, "Oh, nice to meet. Nice to meet you. Uh, good grip. Likewise. Right. Right. Large. Do you wrestle? I... Do you wrestle? You have a really strong grip. That's good for wrestling. Yes, where I come from, it is." Uh, a favored pastime of me and my family. I'll have to go on tour there then, if there's if that's a favored pastime. Okay. Mm. Oh, oh no, oh. So it's exactly the kind of thing that I would be really excited to tell Rufa because he was my manager. I need a new manager. Wait, do you <sighs> wrestle too? I am a professional. <gasps> We should wrestle right now. Yeah, we should because Hold it'll on. make me stop thinking about how I need a new man. Drake literally is moving and trying to move a table out of the <laughs> way. Like, yeah, Morel is just like picking up whole long tables and moving them. We're like, all right, Morel. we're doing this. Everyone make room, make way. <laughs> oh, you know, this, no. is this a bad idea? I mean, no, I'm drunk. Doesn't matter. Get Drake on stumbling a little bit. <laughs> And then Alona can take as many notes as she wants and it won't get weird because he won't notice how much she's staring at him. Am I staring? I mean, you should have to take to like look to take notes on somebody, right? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're kind of like a scientist. So don't worry. Don't worry. We're, we're going to wrestle. Just be your observant self. Okay, I'll I'll wrestle and take notes. Is is Morel wrestling? Um, I don't I don't know. Wait, Ichi uh, slaps Morel on the back and says, "Yeah, you are." Oh, okay. I guess that's I guess that's what we're doing now. She gets uh, out Mor- into the clearing and takes a stance. <laughs> Morel just starts yes. like, undoing his armor. Kind of takes that off, puts it down to the side. All right. Takes off his giant gauntlets, puts them down. All right, lad. So, what style of wrestling do you prefer? Hammerlock, uh, amateur. Do you prefer uh, Aldorfinian, Acadian, the over under? What's yours? He's just kind of going to stare at Morel. There are uh, styles to wrestling. Where oh, I that... come from, we just go at it. Well, okay, well, where I come from, all of the heroes of the town have to come together for a weekend long tournament, usually ending in some form of oil related challenge where do you come from i i come from acadia oh you did say that oh it's okay yeah i would i would like to go there and participate in a tournament for wrestling and he's just kind of wobbling a little bit back and forth you have oily wrestling oh yeah your hometown do you have like like wrestling like like if you have like a giant bubble bath and everyone just wrestles like in the bubble bath. No, no, we usually before. use oil and mud. That's about it. Oh, that's kind of weird. Okay. Yeah. Um, use mud. Yeah, we're not gonna do that here because this is a drinking establishment. Um, and I think if Rufo was here as my former manager, he would say that's a liability. So I'm really gonna channel his energy going forward. I hope you're okay with that. Oh, sure, as long as you are comfortable with that, yeah. Um, great. So then, in that case, just normal wrestling, then, right? Right. And then she's gonna go and try to take him down immediately. <laughs> morale. <laughs> take morale down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me an athletics check, I suppose. Alrighty. Um, I need my cat handy dandy calculator because I can't add simple numbers. As we all know. Five, twelve, thirty. 
33-0? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, he is basically flat-footed because he's not expecting to wrestle you. You come out of nowhere. What Do you know like what grappling move you want to do to this guy? Because it's a critical success. Like the um, the bar, you know what I mean? Like across the neck. Yeah. The, yeah, oh. and just like down to the floor. And then hopefully he's just stunned. And I just like put my foot on him and just be like, okay. That's next. The trigger. <laughs> yeah, as you larry at this guy to the ground, six foot four, like six foot five, like 280 pounds of muscle, just wham, flatten his back. You take him down, you put a foot on him, and he's like, if you wanted to wrestle Dragon, I mean, you could have just said it yourself, mate. Um, all right. <laughs> Can you get off me of very strong legs? I thought you were in on this. I uh, didn't. What? No. Was that? A, was that a cue? I thought you were wrestling too. All right. Just uh, get up. Get out of here. All right. I am so confused. He gets his armor. It says next to Alona. Alona, I'm very confused. I don't know what's happening. Uh, you know what, Morel? I don't think anybody does. And you know, you got in there and and you you tried you you tried to do a thing and and you did real 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 good, but. Maybe you should put your armor back on. It seems like, seems like each you want to take wants to take down the new guy. Yeah, that's all right. I'll leave it off for now. If I need it later, I'll put it on then. But uh, who's gonna rep this match? You. I just sat down. You know what? I think she ought to be should ref the match. That's what I think. Nope, I'm good. I'm good, and she's just. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ichi's already circling, and and she just looks at Dragon and says. We don't need them. This is how we do it here. All right. She's obviously getting drunk and she's just doing the like, you know, circling around thing and saying, just go for it. Yeah. Just and come at me. Dragon's just going to, it like holds up one finger, finishes the rest of his ale and slams it down on the table and then just tears his shirt off. Unnecessary, but okay. And, <laughs> oh, all right. That was very impressive, by the way. And uh, yeah, and he's just going to keep circling her uh, and wait for a potential opportunity to go in and try and uh, take them down. All right. Well, just for giggles, since I think we have ourselves a little wrestling duel, and uh, I think the first instance of combative PvP, let's do a uh, let's do an uh, initiative roll. That's from the before. Let's do an initiative roll between the two of you. That's a 17 on the die. And then... Uh, I'm just trying to, sorry, I'm trying to find the uh, initiative. It's quite all right. Uh, just your perception check. Your perception bonus. Oh, oh uh, plus seven, so 24. 24. Mine nice. was an 18. Okay. So Wes will be going first, and this is how this is going to work. Every round, meaning after every one of you, uh, after both of you have done three actions, we're going to re-roll initiative. Uh, but you... Get to see who goes first. Meaning, Wes is going first. What are you going to do? You have three actions and athletics checks. Count as one action. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Dragon will try and move in and, Im like, immediately almost copy uh, what they did to Morel. Nice. Um, and try and just slam them down on the ground. All right. Give an athletics check. All right. Well, that's not as good as it was before. That's an 18. 18? Okay, Sam, what is your fortitude bonus? My fortitude bonus is a 12. Okay, so with the DC of 22, unfortunately, Wes, you go for that that lariat, that clothesline, and just poof, stiff right across this little rock dwarf's sternum, not going anywhere. You Our, think uh, it might on. be, you're like, you're not sure if it's because she's shorter than maybe other people you've wrestled in your life. But also when you think about it, it's like, for some reason, she's just got a little too much gravity for someone of that size. And it's kind of weird. Yeah. No, so well, he'll hit and then just not budge you at all. You're like, you just hear a little bit of worry. You're very heavy. Yep. Rockdorf. And then uh, I, I, I guess at that point, he would get frustrated and, and literally try and pick her up. All right, give me another athletics check. Okay. This will be out of minus four. Oh, that's an 18 on the die, though. 
Ooh, that looks good though. Uh, that's a thirty-one minus <gasps> four, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. I believe that beats the DC. So you get your hands around her and you're picking her up, and it's like it's like when you pick up a very heavy dog. It's like, oh, this is gonna be so sweet and so easy. <laughs> My back hurts. My back really hurts. This is a big dog. And I then, think that's the first time anyone's ever successfully picked up Ichi. I, yeah, and I would say I you so. definitely see that, like, he's shaking and uh, tensing very, very much. And then I'm just going to try and drop her backwards over my shoulder. Okay. Give me, for the just the sake of, of the three-action economy, give me one more athletics check. This one will be... Absolutely. I'm going to leave it at the minus four because I feel like you're following through with that action. Oh, at 20. I literally got a nat 20. 20. No kidding. <gasps> okay, Ichi, give me a fortitude save. You're getting you're right. getting belly to belly oh suplexed onto your head. Yeah. I, I rolled really a two on the die face. That's a 14. Okay, uh-huh. Wes, you pick her up and it's just, Ugh. it's like, it's just, it's all ego. You're like, rrr, 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 and then you just kind of tip backwards. You lose balance so you can get the, the nice high angle and you just hear this heavy, Tonk slam as each of you fall right on your forehead and you're out cold. Oof, da. What? She, as, as she gets knocked out, she has a little bit of smile on her face, like, like there, she has joy because someone's able to beat her up. She, and in her brain, as she fades out, she's like, that's fucking great. <laughs> um, Ilona's going to run over to Ichi and make sure that she's not concussed. But other than that, Ilona's just going to look at the new guy and go. I imagine he's still laying on the ground, a little dizzy from all of the drinking and stressing or straining himself that much to pick up uh, Ichi. Yeah, Shionibus is definitely like, during this whole fight, has like leaned forward and it was like, what? and just like did I did I win yeah but yeah I did you did real good Alona looks at Morel we gotta get you Hmm? someone get this man a drink rounds on me hold on Morel pops up and two right Morel uh, runs over and just gets like the the highest shelf ale they got. It's it's borderline uh, mead. It's it's just this really nice dense. You can get like the nutty flavor, and then it kind of kicks over in this really sweet uh, palate that just kind of warms your belly up. It's almost like you're drinking um, uh, a cider and uh, a port at the same time. It's delicious. I'm gonna go help him up. <laughs> Yeah, he's please. still sprawled out. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's he's still like imagine. You know, I'm even gonna say because you lived at a rock dwarf. Critically speaking, uh, you're you're enfeebled too uh, okay. until you get a nice rest because your body is just zonked. Thankfully, I didn't give you fatigue, but you're just enfeebled too. So you're getting a minus two to all strength based checks. That's completely understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'll accept the help up and just get up on my feet, but you can tell that Dracon's just a little woozy right now. <sighs> Your friend you good? very heavy. Yeah, it's kind of her Th- shtick. Thank you for the help up. <sighs> yeah. Maybe you should sit down. And he's going to kind of nod and then look back down to the uh to Ichi and be like I can't leave her there and then go and try and like pick her up again and move her to like a booth no, 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 to no. sit down. Give me give me an athletics check with a minus two. Okay. I'm not lying another nat 20. I'm not kidding. <laughs> what? It literally hit the wall and then stopped right on it. My God. So yeah, you are able to pick her up and you can feel your knees shake and tremble. You can feel your arms uh, burn and your fingers uh, go numb, but you are able to pick them up 
and start moving their unconscious body to a safer location in the bar. Just set her down in the booth. <sighs> All right, now I need another drink. Alana just staring at this guy, just blown away by the fact that he just suplexed our rock dwarf barbarian friend and just kind of just stares at him in disbelief. She set her notebook down and she's just looking at him like, how, why are you here? Uh, you want the short answer or the long answer? Judging by the way you look, I, I think you can only get through the short answer. Um, wound up in a place that I didn't want to be, and then I ran away. Ah. Uh, so you could say right now that you have a lack of direction? Yes. Got it. And well. Hearing your stories... Well, their stories, and then you came and asked if I why I was blue. Um, maybe I could hang out with you all more, and your you know, your friends. That one's very heavy, but everyone here seems great. <laughs> you know, I was thinking the exact same thing. We uh. Really. Yeah, oh, that would be great. I haven't been around other. Well, it, everyone looks at me weird because I'm blue. And you don't look at me weird because I'm blue. You just asked why I was blue. And I'm sorry, I lied about the blueberries. It's all right. It was an unprompted kind of rude question to ask i was just um i know a lot and i oh. thought i knew everything uh but i don't know about you well i will tell you about it uh but this you've got fun friends and you can tell he's just he's getting to the point where not the stress and also all of the drinking he's very much like i um He's just very much trashed at this point. Uh, but I, I would like to adventure with you so that I can have good stories. And That's also, it's not rude to ask why I'm blue. If I saw me, I would ask about it too. Thanks for the uh, uh, encouragement, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. stories is why i'm with this group too i think and she leans over to morel who i assume is right next to her and goes get him a water please yeah, yeah we'll go please. get a pitcher right now also she and this may want another water too and um and he's gonna pull out he's gonna fumble for his coin pouch pull out a gold coin slap it down the counter another rail for all my friends, my uh, new friends, who need more. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Alona's going to swipe that gold coin and look at the bartender like and go. <laughs> what are and, you going to um, say, Kylie? I like him. Oh. <laughs> he seems like he fits in well. Would, would I hear that? <laughs> Uh, I think so, yeah. Would you, yeah. you want him to hear that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Uh, when the shirt, ale arrives, though? if it goes at the, if it goes, wait, what? <laughs> Took his shirt off the wrestling and never put it back on. So he's been oh shirtless God. this whole time. <laughs> it's getting a little chilly. In here, I think. Um, Elona tells Burrell to look for his shirt, and if Ale arrives at the table, I would like to roll a perception check to to try and trick Dragon that it's 
it's beer, but really it's water. <laughs> uh, did you say perception or deception? Deception. Okay. Uh, give me a deception check because uh, Morel definitely like grabs our boy, picks him up, puts him down, gets his shirt, kind of like us. All right, give me your hands, give me your arms. Stop, stop struggling. Just let me get the arms through the hole. Don't get your head, mate. In it, there you go. <laughs> that is, that's better. There you go. Who's a, who's a good lad? You got your shirt on. You're doing wonderful. You're beat the Ichi. You're doing good. You can't Thank see you. it. It's a nat 20. <laughs> Hell yeah. So It's you're... a nat 20 for water check. <laughs> hydration. Natural 20 I... hydration check. I feel like that's on brand for Alona. Like, my friends are drunk. I don't want them getting into more bar fights. The only time I'll be really good at deceptions, be like, here, drink this beer. Mommy. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, you get the water, and uh, and you start drinking. You start to feel a lot more refreshed, uh, Dragon. You know, the water is very cool. Uh, by the time it hits your stomach, you, you're so beat up and exhausted and numb. You're not entirely sure what it is, but you want more of it. Your brain immediately wants more of it. He, he chugs it down. My tolerance used to be... Oh, that's nice. Uh, my tolerance used to be much better, and the only way to make your tolerance better again is to drink more. So, more uh, drink. Ilona looks at Shionovus. Is that true? What is? I zoned out. Huh? Uh, in order to get your tolerance up for alcohol, you have to drink more. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. That seems yeah, counter. That makes sense. Yes. Why would no, you want I mean, to I mean, drink I've been, I've been drinking for like thousands, like thousand years or so. Like it makes sense. <laughs> Drake's going to look at thousand. You're thousands of years old? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Have you never seen an elf before, bud? I mean, I had, but I thought maybe they'd be like a hundred years old, but thousands of years old? That's great. I bet you're good at like everything. Um... You know, not all the time. I don't want to brag or anything, you know. Um, religion, not my strong suit. But everything else, sure. Neither are relationships. Why you got to go down that road? I'm we sorry. We were doing so well. Is, I, I, uh, oh, I and you're, you're great at relationships too? Got it. This is ah! That so part makes sense. Conscious for this part. That part makes <laughs> sense because if I lived for thousands of years, I probably wouldn't like people either. You know, you got a point, but you know, I'm learning to get over that road mm -hmm. bump. You know. Mm -hmm. That's good. You're gonna have to tell me more stories when I'm not this drunk. Ooh, I actually have a lot of stories. Not all of them are things that we did, though. Um, a lot of them come from books, like this one. Mm. And Alona holds up the book that she got, The Trees of Dragons. And then she holds up, and then there's, uh, uh, and then there's this one. And she holds up the, uh, the restricted section, Good Boy Scout rope book. This one was, this one's, this one's spicy. I'll read it to you later. She puts it away. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I want more stories about dragons and fighting and magic, though, too. I like, I like those. Yeah. He's just kind of like looking around. I didn't hurt your friend bad, did I? I kind of feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Ichi's real tough. She's a, you know, she's a famous luchadora. She's like, she is small yet mighty. And you know, luchadora. Mm -hmm. you, didn't you did. That's so cool. Yeah, you should ask to get her belt now because he took her down. 
that was awesome. I just won an autograph, kind of. Did I win? No, I didn't win. But that was awesome. Oh, my head. Oh, what? What were you guys talking about? Hey, good job. Oh, thank you. I need ale for my luchador friend. More. <laughs> More uh, Alona pushes the water towards Ichi. <laughs> Ichi chugs the water and slams it down. It says, Another. <laughs> More gonna... ale, please. And he's like, and uh, <laughs> Dracon is just going to pull out another coin and slap it down on the counter. Another round for me and my friends. More ale. More stories. This is so great. Alana, did you take lots of notes? I, I, I took so many notes. This is all so of good. them. This is so look at all of us wrestling. Well, not not you, Alana, and not you, Shionibus, but the rest of us and drinking. And and what else? What are we doing? Like I mean, I know we're drinking and wrestling, which is like all we should need in life other than coffee and buns and looking at clouds. But what are we just doing? Because if we do another thing, is another one of you going to turn into a god and leave me? I mean, uh, not you, Dragon, because you just got here, so probably you probably wouldn't. I don't know. I don't know you well. Maybe Do your you friends would. turn into gods often? I mean, it's happened at least once. I mean, someone said that Shionibus was the avatar of Anubis earlier, so we ne- we're never really it's sure. It's happened at least twice. She said avatar of death. I don't know that that makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Don't remind mm-hmm. me. It's kind of stressing me out. <laughs> um, Kickout is just uh, going to like stare at everyone. You guys are all so awesome. You'll get well, there too one day, you know? It's it's it just takes time, you know. I mean, we're not blue. We're not blue. We're not. I'm not either. So, um, wait. I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, he's just going to like sit next what? to Morel and then like you see his eyes start to close just a little bit and his head's just going to like fall against Morel. <laughs> Dude, now this means I won because now he's knocked out. <laughs> I'm not out yet. I'm just resting my eyes for a second. Morel just takes a mighty bear paw and he starts patting you in the head. He goes, There, there, lad. We're just going to close our eyes and keep breathing and just just, just go to sleep. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Is there an end in this tavern? <laughs> Uh, yeah, one of the ladies that, that are working at the Everly Grace Tavern will tell you there's many, many different uh, rooms for rent in the upper floor, um, you know, if you want to, because you're you, they'll give you one night for free. I think Ichi is going to um, feel the headache that she has partially from the booze and partially from the suplexing. And look around and be like, you know, honestly, we probably aren't going to solve the problem of me getting a new manager tonight. And we're probably not going to solve the problem of like, why all of you keep turning into gods and leaving me tonight. So I think I'm going to go to bed. See you tomorrow, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Good sleep, EG. Okay. Bye. Don't leave. But I mean, like, you can go to sleep, but like, don't leave me. Okay, bye. She's going to go get a room and go to sleep. Ilona t- turns to Shionibus and goes, I mean, she has a point. Are you going to turn into some sort of famous god and leave us too? Are you kidding? Have you met me? I think I'm like too me to be a god, you know? Like, who would worship me? Like, let's be real. That's kind of like a big thing about being a god. (laughs) Alona looks around and like raises her hand. (laughs) Yeah. She like slaps her hand out of the air. Get your hand down. What you doing? 
Get fool. Junimus, I think all of the people in this bar would worship you. Have you seen yourself? <laughs> um, <laughs> but okay. I'm, I'm not saying. going anywhere. Don't don't worry. I don't. I'm, everything's gonna be fine. All right. Elona looks at the very, very sleepy looking Dragon. Looks at Morel. Well, I think it's about time we wrapped up here. Morel, are you okay sharing a room with the new guy, making sure he doesn't vomit on himself in his sleep? Wouldn't be the first time. Wouldn't be the last. I'll watch after the little bugger. Thanks. I'm going to head to bed too. I think in the morning we really need to tackle where we go from here. We still haven't found Tobias, and, uh, well, we do kind of have some inclination of where he might be, so, uh, if it wasn't Shin, looks like we might be going to Orr. Looks like a, a good time to me. Okay. As everyone gets into the respective beds and gets cozy and comfy, as Ichi goes to bed with a kind of headache that can only come from an afternoon of constant fighting, she can feel her body kind of swirling in a, in a pool of water almost as she slips off into unconsciousness. As Dragon gets into his bed, his body spinning with the inevitable hangover to follow today's activities, uh, you, the last thing you hear is a is a very concerned uh, Morel going, "Oh no! Oh, I gotta get a bucket! Oh no!" And then everything just kind of fades. <laughs> and as Alona gets her respective uh, place of sleeping, and Shionibus gets her respective place of sleeping, night fades, and fades into a dream. You see this eye of green is open like it's looking at you. And the eyeball in this eye begins to swirl until it eventually forms a tall armored figure. It seems to walk in shadow being lit by the green eye If you know what is best, don't save this world. Save yourself. And with that, we're going on our five minute break. We'll be right back. Um, before I leave, I want to give a hero point to everyone because that scene was hilarious and huge kudos to each of you for that amazing commitment. <laughs> I commit to the bit. You commit to the bit and you get the hero point. Hell yeah, absolutely. We're going to go on, back. We're going to go on a five minute break. When we come back, we'll come back with part two of episode 14. Look forward to seeing you then, everyone. Be back in five minutes. Hey, everyone. Hello. hello. I, was just, I was just telling everyone that I have a pizza waiting for me when the show is done. So I'm going to eat the, the pizza. Uh, I love waiting for me there's frog frog shot. frog frog shot everyone if you've been waiting for for frog this is frog the mug he is the best mug we love frog All right there you go yeah you got much. what you came here for everyone and don't worry there'll be more there'll be more voting th on things later we'll figure that out as we go along uh but that being said we're going to start off with the next day uh again everyone had that shared dream um I'll let you decide. How late in the morning are you waking up? First dawn where the dewy mist is still making a nice little hazy cover for the sun. Maybe sometime a little past that. The coffee's uh, finished being brewed and very hot. Or maybe mid-afternoon where lunch is starting to be thought about while people are like, are they dead up there? What is your uh, goal for waking up? Um, Alona's gonna wake up really early and do some prayers to uh to Afra. Um, and the prayers go something like, Hi Afra, I know it's been a while. Um, I've been really busy. I don't know if you could tell, but I am I am super sorry about the um lack of conversation. Um, I have to ask you, what was my dream last night? Hmm? Was that you? 
No. What you didn't send me like? a dream? No, I didn't. No. I had a dream that there was a green eye and then it was swirling and then there was a man in armor and he said something like, if you know what is best, save yourself. Don't save this world. I don't like that. Mm -mm. No. I don't like it either. You didn't send that to me? No. Baby girl, why would I send that to you? Why do you think I, I would do know. that? Maybe you missed me. Well, I mean, I do. I'm glad to see you're doing okay down there. I'm really proud of you, but no. No, I didn't send that, sweet pie. Okay. So if you didn't send it to me. Mm -hmm. And it's some other major evil guy who wants to destroy the world and is trying to convince us that it's futile. And, oh, I'm so tired of this. I left the world so I could help you. I mean, I can't really help people if they're all dead. So in a way, you're really doing me a solid. Yeah, that's a good point. Solid point. I don't know. Am I anywhere close? You're getting there. Thank you for always being there for me. Except in this last battle, though, you really just, I, I literally, I rolled, I rolled like so low. Well, I don't know. Why were you not there? Was it because it was, it was Shin? And 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 you do, you have beef with Salvamat or something? There were people dying. <laughs> no, I don't have beef with Salvamat. No, of course not. People die sometimes. We try our best, but when you've done a triage before, you know that you can only sometimes help so many people at one time. Yeah. I guess after all this time, it just still takes some getting used to. Yeah, it doesn't get easier, that's for sure. But, uh, you saw that stuff with Morel, right? Yeah, dude, that was real cute. You guys are dorks. Ah! I know. <laughs> ah! Yeah, he said he was going to take me, take me on a date to a library. Oh, that is, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna watch when that time comes. I'm just gonna I'm gonna get some popcorn. I'm gonna get, get Leia fur and I'm going to get in a deer. I'm just gonna watch and just kind of have a great fun time. Oh god. Oh, it's gonna go really well then. That's between y'all. Unless I ask for a favor from Adariah. Do you want me to put in a word to the love god? I could do that. Oh no, no, you don't have to do that. No, no. okay, okay. Oh. I mean, I, 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 wow, I appreciate it. That's really nice of you. Um, but you don't, you don't have to do that. I, I'd rather see how this goes. No, that's the best. Do it yourself and see where it goes. Until then, is there anything else you need from me? Just if you can keep an eye out for anything shifty. Let me know. I'll do my best. Okay, bye. As the prayer ends, you can't help but smell uh, the incense, which burns a little stronger whenever you pray to Afra, as you're reminded of kind of uh, the way she died in a fire and ascended to a goddess. You got to get that smell. Uh, and the incense just dulls out. And at the, at the point in time, you see... Uh, um, uh, Morel is also doing his morning prayers and he's going, and um, also we met this new guy. He's blue. I don't know why he's blue. I, he says it's not rude to ask. I think he's really strong. I don't know. Uh, he did vomit a lot last night, but to be fair, he was drinking like an angry fish. So I hope he's okay. In fact, if you can make sure he leaves, oh, that, would be, that would just be brilliant. At that, at that exact moment, uh... <laughs> Dragon is going to pull the pillow over his head, go, go, mm. <laughs> loud. Oh, right. I'll take my prayer outside. You sleep well, champ. You had a big day. And then he just kind of leaves. 
So how about you, Shiobis? What are you doing? What time in the morning are you getting up? Uh, I feel like after that dream, I wouldn't necessarily go back to sleep. Uh, so she's up bright and early before the sun even rises. It kind of makes her way down stairs to the tavern and whatnot. Um, I'm going to get two drinks at the bar. Uh, a coffee for me. And then I'm just going to get a glass. I'm just going to get coffee for me and then just a glass. And then I'm going to pour my wine into the glass. Um, And I'm just going to sit there with my mug and pray. Just a quick, what the fuck, bro? Avatar? Talking to uh, Anubis? Yep. Of course, daughter. Why would you be anything else but my avatar? Little conversation would have been nice before you know, just... And you didn't even tell me. I heard it from someone else. Yeah. Your time in my judging chambers was truly inspired and when you put on the veil of duat that i gave you it marked you as someone in between the worlds of the living and the dead so do i like get cool powers and shit Captain, yes of course you do it's the veil of duat cool cool yes. cool, cool uh side note did you send a dream to me last night? No. I that's that's conscious madness. I just make sure people die when they need to die. That's I just, I assume no avatar. I don't know what the new guidelines are. I just I'm just here. Oh that, yes, that's fair. You are new to the job. All right. Well, in that case, I always start said do you do you wish to have dreams, daughter? I mean, if they're about impending doom, not particularly, no. No, okay. Do you, uh, uh I don't know. We'll talk about this later. Back to the All dream right. I had. Right. Uh, there was like a green eye and someone basically telling me to back the fuck up or I'll die. Do they, do they say those words? No, but I'm paraphrasing. Oh, what words did they say? Do you remember? Um, they're words that have a lot of letters in them. Uh, if you know what's best, don't save this world. Something along those lines. Hmm. Interesting. And then there was this guy like following the eye with armor. It was a green eye. Did I mention that? I don't remember. It's early. The armor makes me think it's Koga. He never takes the damn thing off. Some say it's just his skin, but green he's not a shall we say man of fashion he wouldn't have the focus to put a green backlight hmm see so you have like no idea who this could be no clue maybe it's a devil maybe Ravon's up to his old shenanigans again oh if i find that man Speaking of devils, did you know I was um that thing with my family? Yes, absolutely. Why do you think they chose you to be the monarchs? And you didn't tell me? You're not telling me a lot of things nowadays. I, it's not my place to tell you what you need to know. <gasps> god, oh god, oh god. Okay, so like... <sighs> So I have to like hunt these people down and like. You are the avatar of death after all. Well, I know when I find them. You will feel something in the back of your head like something isn't right. Like a, like a tickle or a twitch or a spasm. And you'll know, you'll feel it. Finding them. On the other hand, that'll be harder. They like to blend in. So 
they don't always appear as what they might be. No. Well, where do I go from here? Well, if someone said they didn't want you to save the world, I think that means you spit in their face and you save the world. I'm so sick and tired of saving the world. I just want to sleep. Um, you can also sleep. All right, fine, fine. Save the world again. Are you going to drink that wine? Um, no. I, I have a cask in my private chamber. She's going to slide have. it back to her. Always great talking to you. Later, daughter. Um, have a good time killing people and be safe. And she's just gonna like slam her head on the table and just like Ugh! <laughs> uh so Sam, when when does Ichi wake up in the day? Ichi sleeps in a lot. I think she sleeps in till like eleven thirty. So whenever you wander in though to find her. Uh, whoever whoever wanders in you see her hard at work she has lined her room with salt and she's burning some kind of like tree bark and just like waving it around the room around the windows and around the door and um I think after she had that nightmare she kept having bad dreams but they were like her her own brain bad dreams. Mm -hmm. So she had a dream where she went to go um, to a wrestling championship and she gets on stage, but she's naked. But that's not the bad dream because she's like, whatever. She looks down, her belt's on backwards. Embarrassing. Oh, God. Um, she can't turn it around. Oh, God. She has to walk backwards out of the rink. Um, then she has another dream where she's walking on a hill and um, over the hill she looks and she thinks it's her her orc lady friend and they're gonna go on a date but instead it's um, three giant skewers of giant strawberries and they're coming for her and and they're they're trying to crush her and spike her she's running away but they're all start little mini ones start flying down like arrows so she has dreams like nightmares like this all night and wakes up <laughs> oh oh uh I said, oh God, is this because I haven't like done my like ancestor offerings like ever? Okay, she gets out of bed. She starts doing everything. The aforementioned salt and, and smoke. And um, she's like, uncle, you were a very good uncle. I hope you're doing good in the spirit realm. Um, please stop all these weird dreams from coming into my brain. You're cool. Uh, uh, Grandma Abuela, uh, you're super great, and I know I like actually kind of see you a lot because like you just you, like shop in weird places. It's really cool. I like it a lot. Um, here have some some good smoke, good incense, and um, no more nightmares, please. Um, is that good? Uh, as you look around uh, in mid silence, the awkward silence is broken by the faint ribbit of a frog off the distance. That's good. No, no more dreams. Uh, yeah. All right. Is are the rest of you? Is anyone like upstairs or at this point? Is everyone downstairs? Kind of in the main dining hall area. Just checking in. Yeah. All right. Um. So brief moment because Blue Boy is is definitely going to have a rough morning. Uh. So Kylie, as Shionibus is up early very very early having a coffee and having a wine uh just before the sun rises that kind of awkward dusk uh time you do see uh two other gentlemen enter the place together one wearing this uh beat up uh brown padded gambeson covered in uh plate mail already but the plate mail is just beat to hell uh, and you see next to him wearing a bright pink gambeson with bright rose gold armor. And these two men come walking in looking identical. 
if it wasn't the, for the fact that they've gone out of the way to color code each other and their eyes are reflective of the deity that they that they work with as a champion, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. And they come in, and the one with the pink just says, "Listen, Marius, I know we have to do morning inspections, but I really think that we need to really." It's like, and then Marius turns to us, Gaius, if I ever want your opinion, I'll slap the coffee out of your mouth and ask for it. Now sit down, coffee's on me. And Gaius just kind of sits down. Hello, elf lady. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Gaius. That's my twin brother, Marius. Um, hello. You're up early. Yeah. We're the, we're the, we're, we're two of the five drill sergeants of the order, so we have to be up before the sun to make sure we train everyone. Isn't that oh. right, Marius? The, the Platinum Hammer Order? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, well, I, I worship the god of love, he worships the god of war, and we and, uh, oh, Iyelenu Obinrin, uh, she told us a lot about uh, an elf lady that might be here, you might know her, she, she's also a drill sergeant. Uh, yeah, I'm good friends with Iyelenu. Oh, good, okay, good. Okay. Well, if you ever want like... to meet her, what is it? Wait, she told you about me? Oh, yeah, is she the elf lady? No, 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 no. she, she told me about an elf lady that may be coming, she's got a bow. Just really keen shot. I think that's you. Um, I'm, she's gonna look around. Yeah, I, I guess you found me. All right, I'm really good at finding things. About this time, Morel sits down and joins you for early morning coffee before prayer. Hello, Shiona Beast. Uh, who's this guy in the pink next to you? Uh, Gaius. Is your name Gaius? No, it's Gaius. 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 Yeah, no, it's not Gaius. I hate that when people call it Gaius. It's I. This is the first time meeting you. I don't. I don't do names. No. Well, well, all right. Well, my name is Gaius. Uh, Guy, Gaius du, uh, uh, Dusis of. Uh, this is my twin brother, Marius. Du- Marius, say hello, Marius. Marius just salutes and gets the coffee ready. Uh, I'm Shionabis. This is Morel. Uh, what what are you doing here? Oh, we're stopping off for a quick coffee before we go back to the training grounds. Do you guys have like new recruits coming in, or like uh, always uh, new pilgrims, new champions, new clerics, new oracles, hmm. new witches? We have to constantly train them how to fight or how to protect others. And Morel just goes, "That sounds really cool." Wait a minute. Is it just me, or do we all have the exact same voice? She frantically looks between all of them. Say something one more time. Wait, which one? Oh, no. Uh, I, I need more wine than this. You see? You see Marius comes back with like four coffees. He puts them down. He goes, listen, there's a shortage of voices in this world. Eventually, someone's going to sound like somebody else. Oh, no. My brain can't (laughs) differ between all of them. Well, pleasure to meet you guys, Marius. Um, Just by chance, did you like, did you were you in this town last night? Of course, yeah. We rarely leave. We, we're teachers. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, do you know anything about like a green eye or something? Like, did you have like a? Does like people have weird dreams? Or like I mean, pe- people have weird dreams all the time. You, you dream of a green eye. Yeah. No, I'm not ringing a bell. No, sorry. Hi, a guy reaches into his pocket. He goes, do you want to see a picture of my son? I, he's, he's really cute. Look at that little fella. Look at him. Look at him. I'm so proud of him. Look at this little guy. She's just... But, no. Uh, and we'll, like, hi. look away. <laughs> Not even deterred. He turns to, to Morel, and, and he's like, you want to see a picture of my son? And Morel's like, would I? And they, they just kind of talk about the picture of the, of the kid. Ugh, children, gross. Does Morel have a picture of Joey? No, but he does. He, you do see him go like, oh, I got this lad. He's not really my son, but, you know, I take care of him. He's a good boy. His name is Joey. I love him to death. So 
the morning passes, the prayers, the waking up, the drinking, the drinking. And then speaking of Dragon, tell us, tell us what it's like waking up for you. So uh, I would imagine like kind of soon after uh, Morel left, he realized he couldn't go back to sleep. So I, I would imagine that everyone downstairs might hear a thump as he rolls out of bed onto the floor and immediately starts doing push-ups. Getting that push-up. You got to get that, yeah. get that morning swole going on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then he would start to come down the stairs, but definitely still nursing a hangover. Uh, and as he like come, stumbles a little bit down the stairs eyes squinting just a little bit and hair just very disheveled uh comes downstairs and uh is going to walk over to the bar one ale and the biggest pile of eggs and whatever meat you have okay and they go back they come back with one ale bunch of eggs and sausage and uh potatoes and slices of bread and then just go one dwarven breakfast here you go thank you and he's gonna slap a coin down and then walk over to the table where uh morel and two very similar looking guys sitting why if i join you Right, so my little book, bo- yeah, of course, yeah, have a seat. Oh, uh, but I should probably go off the morning drills in a bit. So yeah, please have a seat. Thank you. He's going to sit down and then just like you see him huddled over the plate and just is eating eggs and sausage like a little too fast, probably. <laughs> like kind of shoveling it into his mouth while intently listening to the conversation. It's a, it's a lot of talk about, like, this is my son. I know. I don't have a son. What do you do for fighting-wise? I do this. And it's just this loop of, like, combat speak and, you know, two paladins talking about paladin stuff with their paladin friends. Ichi, I think, comes downstairs finally and um, meets up with everyone and is like, wow, you and else have crazy nightmares? Uh, yeah, you too? Yeah, like huge strawberries trying to impale me. Oh. God, it was so weird. I had a strange <laughs> dream about a guy in armor. He's green. Yeah, I think I had that one too. Wait, um, did you, were you also like, um, <clears throat> forgot you put your belts on backwards in the wrestling rink? No, not that part. No. Missed, uh, missed a date with an orc woman? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so everyone had the dream, though, about the glowing green eye and the, the guy who said, don't save the world, right? Oh, yeah, there yeah. was an eye, too. Yeah. Oh, great. That's awesome. Um, Alona gets up from the ground because as soon as she heard Dragon doing push-ups, she was reminded that she needed to do push-ups, too. <laughs> um, and she dusts her robes off and she walks back over to the table and she goes okay can i do a perception check pj to see if it's the green king uh you can do a you do a perception check why not okay nope Mm. well that's not that bad it's not the worst it's not great not point, the worst. Of, point of order. What, what? What's the number again? The die face. The, or... the, the, the total. Yeah. Oh, the total is twenty three. Twenty three. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Cool. My memory may be a bit fuzzy because the end of season one was a little bit ago. I, I believe, if I recall correctly, the only one who actually looked the Green King in the face or at the Green King directly was the woman who almost. Uh, shot and killed Korokos in the middle of the conversation to him, Shit. which is Shionibis. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, hey, Chio. 
Yeah, babe, what's up? Um, I didn't get a good look at the Green King really before um he disappeared, but I think that you did. Do you remember what he looks like? PJ, do I remember what he looks like? <laughs> you do. You you recall uh easily like a 12 foot standing tall body wearing green armor with uh the the helmet seems to kind of break off of these gnarled uh claws of gold and a long cape uh you don't remember ever actually seeing any form inside the armor um in fact when the green king basically left Korokos to die you almost seem to recall it the armor broke apart piece by piece to leave through a portal i'm gonna explain all of that is that what we we didn't see that did we that's not what is that what we saw shionibus saw that i know shionibus saw that i'm I'm saying is that what we saw in our dream oh okay 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 those forms match pretty close approximation again it was backlit but you do see a tall suit of armor kind of a crown growing out of the helmet tall suit of armor crown that's similar green eye how many villains do you know that have a green motif you know it's like it's so cliche at this point um but let's all right chio do you think that that was the green king that we saw in our dreams i think that it's a possibility he would know that we were the ones to foil Korakos's plans and the reason why he left Korakos. So if he's next in line to kind of take over everything, he knows what we're capable of. So it's definitely a possibility. But the one thing that gets me is that he knows what we're capable of. And Lona looks at Dragon. She doesn't know who he is yet. Or does he? I think it's all just kind of who's affiliated with us. I'm sure Tobias would have had the same dream if he was here. Morel, you had it right. What? I was gonna say. I was gonna say mid bite. Dragon's like, so like, is the Green King like the King of Plants or something? And like continues to eat. Hold up. (laughs) In the story that Ichi told you, she didn't mention the Green War. She just mentioned the Battle of Shin. Yep. Ichi was just Ichi, Ichi's had a lot of. Well, wait. Did you say this in character? Did you ask yeah. this in character? Ichi's like, I left out a lot of details. Um, mostly I just I, I still miss Rufus, so like that's just kind of all I was thinking about. Um, and then also I also told him about um the Bun Boys franchise and how it's the best cinnamon bun roles in all the land and how Rufo was going to help me um, expand my branding into um, maybe you know us getting our own franchise and now I don't know where that stands anymore because I can't count but yeah not the Green King I didn't mention that do you want to try one of those by the way I get it there's a lot of the a lot of stuff that's been happening uh, recently but all right, Clearly. here's a little down on the Green King. You know the big war that happened like a year or so ago, right? Like six-ish months ago? Mm-hmm. Big war? Right. Well, we stopped that from happening. Um, the person that was in the forefront of that big debacle was someone named the Green King. He had manipulated the minds of some um, tribes um, of orcs. One person in particular, whose name was General Korakos, completely manipulated him into believing that he could overthrow the world and that was a good idea um and so he tried to do that uh but we stopped him and it was successful and uh, there was a lot it was a lot okay um rufa was one of the people who didn't believe that the green king was out of our lives completely and was still heading the investigation on whether or not he was still around um based on our dream last night it's safe to say that he was right there is something really strange happening um to us and uh i think the green king might know that we're looking for tobias 
and trying to prevent the ninth circle prophecy from happening. And if he knows that we're looking for Tobias, we need to find him before he does. So he's going to set down his fork and have, having cleaned his plate. So we just need to kill the green king and then it's done. Uh, it's not too complicated. I wish it was as cut and dry. Shionobis described that it was a suit of armor disappearing into a portal, right? <laughs> yep. Oh. Yeah. Like piece that, by piece. It makes it a little bit more complicated. <laughs> Just but that, uh that makes sense. We do know that we do know that when Tobias went missing, for context, Tobias is our friend who from birth was told he was a chosen one, found out that he was meant to sacrifice his life to save the world, and ran away. Um, when we went into his chambers to investigate, we found uh, a map, and two sections of the map were missing. One of the sections of the map was, that was missing was Shin, which is why we went to Shin, which is why we saved the capital city and the people of Shin and how we lost Rufa. The other map was to or or the greater Ar- Acadia region where you know there's Brack, there's all of that. Oh where he's the map, from. Yeah, where Morel's from. Where I'm from. All That's right. the only lead that we have. Well I may be of help with that. I'm uh well in a former life I was a bounty hunter. How many lives have you had? Uh, Just the two so far. So far. Was your name Dragon in your past life too? Yes. Well, they when I woke up, they told me I had a different name, but I didn't really like it, so I didn't keep it. Oh. A name that goes with your new body something along those lines yeah i woke up as a prince i didn't really like it so i left god damn it a little looks at one. a little looks at shionavis and she looks at morel she's like the three I of swear. you know. i swear i had nothing to do with this i promise i just met the bloke i don't know him it's gotta oh. be me well, you too I as just well attract royalty you're just so amazing Ichi, you're we're just we just magnet, magnet. I know it's a problem. I need a manager. Uh, look, but, I'll just be honest. I wasn't a prince originally. I just woke up that way one one morning, and uh, yeah, not really my my style. But wait, you you're you're a princess, and you're a prince. Uh, I was a prince. I'm not really a prince anymore. Still a princess. I'm a wrestler. <laughs> I I'm know. A <laughs> I want to. I want to have another match with you again, too. Looking at better you. keep doing those push-ups. Won't hold back this time. And he like look. You see, like he was. He's smiling and like excited to do another match. And then he like the the grin fades. He's like you were taking it easy. Maybe. All right. All right. Well, and I know that, uh, well, when everyone's drinking, everyone's very boisterous and excited about things. Um, but it, it really is okay that I come with you, right? I, I mean, I had the same dream uh, and everything, um, <clears throat> but that's okay, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, Dragon, we're, listen, we've gone through a lot. We lost someone that we loved very much. And if there's anything that I've learned, which is a common phrase that I say now, from leaving my home and venturing out into the world is that everyone that we meet, when we met Ichi, now meeting you 
you're special and we want you around if for nothing more than to make stories with you and uh, see who has the better grip for arm wrestling. He, he gets a small smirk when you start talking about like him being special and being able to join the group. And then arm wrestling comes up and he's like, yes, more challenges with, with heroes, with stories uh, like yours, I mean. It'll be a challenge myself. But before we leave, we, we should probably know just for like, you know, safety's sake, if we're going to get stopped on the street anywhere, where exactly are you a prince of? And he's going to kind of like look up and try and remember. Well, I spent some time there. Something... Uh, Something about seven kingdoms and look, I my head hurts a little bit right now. So eh, there there was a lot going on there, but they worshipped some not great things. I'll just be honest, I don't want to get into it right now. Okay. Bet I'm not saying <laughs> that character, sorry. Anyway. Okay, no, that's fine. You're, 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 you've also been through a lot. And, uh, well, I suppose if everyone's ready, we should get going. I don't yeah, know where I'm going to start. Before huh? we go, I just, I just got to get all my salt. I, I didn't realize we'd be checking out today. Uh, it's all over the room. I'll, I'll be back. Just gonna go upstairs <laughs> and after like 20 minutes come back down all right uh before we head out to continue the hunt for where in the world is tobias raffialis uh does anyone want to do one last thing talk to an npc do some research buy something anything else before you hit the road and leave the order of the platinum hammer oh i see some hands uh sh- uh i i got all my Cool items that I never handed out. Um, I'm going to take out one of my items that Anubis had given me and look at it for a second. Uh, Alona? Yeah? Uh, so when we were in Duat, uh, when we were leaving, Anubis had given me a, a few things um one of them that doesn't really serve a purpose for me um so i think he kind of gave it to me as a joke because he thinks some things are funny and he needs to work on his humor um but i thought it might kind of suit you more than me because you know the whole healing um i know it's like not like your your style or anything but uh, you're like life and whatnot, and he's death. And anyway, uh, she's gonna hand Alona the jar, the embalming jar. Like I said, what you don't do? need to keep oh. it. <laughs> you don't need to keep it. Uh, I'll send it to you over text. Got it. Um... Uh, you don't need to keep it. I know it's not like your style or anything, but like I felt like it would serve you a better purpose than me. So, you know, I thought like, why the hell not? And I just sent it to you. Uh, Lona takes a look at the jar, and ah, that's a lot. Um, yeah. And she takes a look at it, and she goes, "Of course, I'm going to keep it." It's a gift from you. Even if it's a re-giving of a gift, you still gave it to me. And it means a lot. I will use it to the best of my ability. Thank you. Of course. That is that is all for me until Sam or Ichi comes back. So 
Ichi, Ichi go comes ahead. Back. Yeah. Oh. I- I Ichi say, comes down years. with all her stuff and she's got um a jar of salt. She puts it in her bag. I got a da da. I got a da. Exactly what I thought. <laughs> Ichi. Uh, I have something for you. What? Yeah. Um, I didn't give it a chance to like give it to you before because like kind of forgot about it. And I just wanted to like confirm some things before I like, you know, handed stuff out, you know. Uh but here you go. It's she's gonna hand you in a choker. Um, you know, it's not really my style. Uh but I figured it might be yours. Or I mean, I guess we can give it to the new guy if you don't want it. But like I wanted to give it to you first because, you know, friends. Didn't you give me a bracelet? Oh, <gasps> the friendship bracelets. So like this is like you you know. It's a friendship choker. Yeah, this one's magical. What kind of magic? What? Um, it's it does uh, a lot of things. Uh, one way more intimidating. You mean if I and... put it on, people will be even more afraid of me? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's why I thought it was going to be like right up your alley. I just sent it to you on immediately. You know, I think I've heard of things like this before. Like, uh, like what do they call it? What do they call it? Bad bitch vibes. Yes. Nailing it. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. That's what I'm here for. You know, you got to like add it to the brand, you know? Yeah. That's so nice. I don't have anything for you, but no. Um, I gave you those strawberries the other day. Um, yep. You didn't have the strawberry nightmare, right? No. Okay. But I'm interested in to, to like hear what yours was about because that's kind of terrifying. You know, maybe maybe another time. I, I kind of did blurt out all of my personal nightmares, so I should maybe think before I speak again. Tone it down a little. Yeah. You know, don't want to scare the new guy. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, that's it for me. I'm just going to... She's uh, awkwardly walk away because... Ooh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, after that lovely gift exchange, um, the, the people of the Platinum Hammer are very happy to give you a boat to travel back to uh, the continents on the opposite end of the world where, uh, you know, the Akkadian Empire rests as the mightiest empire of history. It's, uh, you know, allies and city-states, and of course, tucked way below it, the, the nation of Or. Um, they say that uh, there's actually, because of this timing, there's a, a group of pilgrims and clerics going uh, on a major trip out there. And they would really love if you would like to help them out. You're not obligated to. Uh, but this is a pilgrimage that happens once every year that goes to the holy site where Minerva herself uh, died and ascended to become the first human uh, ascendant to a god. A major historical site, big impact. Um, so they said, if you'd like to follow the pilgrims and clerics, they're going to basically lead you right to Or eventually. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, they said, well. if, not, if not, you can take a boat, but after that, you know, we're going to land on the coast and then good luck, of, you know, your choice. You're all the seasoned adventurers, so I'll follow your lead. I I haven't done anything like slay a dragon god before, so. I mean, we barely did either. Yeah. It was real close. Um, I mean, that sounds like the best plan we've got. I don't mind going up the coast. Maybe Tobias hasn't made it that far either. Who knows? We can go fishing on the way. We'll see. Fishing. Yay. Yay. I I enjoy fishing. We do a lot of fishing where I'm from. Yeah, I mean it was like the last like really fun thing that like we got to do with the Rufa before like there was a whole war. Um 
mean, there was a whole war before, too. But... It's a lot of wars. It yeah. kind of happens. Do I need therapy? Oh. Yes! Oh. Alona gets out her book. I've been waiting oh. for this. <laughs> But Thanks we should get on black. the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I, and he, he's going to like step in. Yeah, I, the, the best therapy is fighting, I found. Yes. Mm -hmm. Damn right. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Exactly. We'll get on that boat and then I'm going to have you punch me in the face and then we're going to go fishing. It's going to be great. There's right. nothing wrong with me. You guys Let's are my go. best friends ever. I just need to let you know that <laughs> we're going to get along great. So you yeah. get you get on the boat. Uh, you you are uh, uh, flanked on all sides by by pilgrims of extreme wealth. Uh, whether they have it because they're just from a rich family, or they pulled all their resources together from the local uh, uh, communities, uh, clerics and oracles. Um, you see a few a few of the the champions are wearing uh, this kind of tattered white uh, hood and cape. Their armor uh, seems very familiar, and they have a shield. And on the shield is a, is a big kind of red symbol. And you learn that this is the symbol of the hospitalier, and that they are continuing to do their job, which is to protect the pilgrims uh, as they continue this pilgrimage to the site where Minerva ascended. So they're all there just kind of talking shop and talking about, like, fighting and healing and protecting all that great stuff. And it's, it's about a two-day boat ride to get back from this little jewel of – of an island back to the coast. Once you're there, you dock in this tiny port uh, town in the middle of a, a very sandy, desertous area. It's almost like coast, desert, water, nothing but blue crystal sea and sand as far as the eye can tell. There's people selling horses and camels. There's people looking to rent caravans. Uh, the pilgrimage, uh, the pilgrims go to the, the temple or the, the hospitaliers and they tell them like, you know, don't worry, we already have this taken care of. They go pay for a few caravans and pay for a few horses, but that's just for the pilgrims. They look to you and they say, do you, do you want to go with us? Do, do you have a way, do you have money enough to buy your own ride? Listen, do we have money enough to pay for our own ride? how much how much is a ride yeah the salesman just says well uh if, if you want a spot in the caravan it's about uh, about 50 gold a person um if you'd like to get a private caravan then it's 100 gold a head oh don't worry i've got this ichi takes out her bag and rustles around and pulls out two big certificates that she unfolds it's like these are um discount coupons for your nearest fun boys they're good at all locations um i'm going to sign it for you give me a one moment she she rustles in her bag and pulls out a pen ichi Paktan, papa kui mm. yeah. what's your name oh uh the, my my name my name is jeremy no <laughs> uh interesting okay jeremy just gonna write to <laughs> jeremy is there anyone else with you here jeremy uh no no i i'm the manager on staff right now the other manager has to go and do the caravan uh but i'll take those coupons no problem and and if you'd like uh just a few more extra gold to make sure that'll happen really quickly Okay, um, I only have two certificates, so one for you and one for your manager. His his name is also Jeremy. Oh no, no, it's it, not at all. And then he just takes the two uh, certificates and they kind of like fold them up, puts them gently in his pocket. But but you can you can go in the caravan if you'd like to. Great. Okay. All right. Well, um, catch uh, our traveling play uh, going through town. It's called Rufa would know what it was called. Uh, just you know i'll be around for a show you'll hear about us sometime we save the world all right everyone on everyone on the caravan wait are we doing a caravan or are we doing our own is that what we want i just gave them coupons i can take them back 
Oh no, 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 it's okay. I want to keep the coupons. I like them. I don't I don't know what a bone boys is, but I, I feel like it's special. I'm just gonna keep them. So if I give you 50 gold, can we get our own then? And then the coupons? Yeah, I think I think if you give me 50 gold on top of the coupons, we have a deal. That'll work. I'll give him 50 gold. Alona, you're driving. Ah <gasps> yes. Oh no. Um so uh, in about like 20, 30 minutes time, they get out a nice little uh, carriage for you all, like a, like, like a two hitched caravans together. Nice and nice and simple. Uh, they, since you want to be the driver, they definitely let Alona drive and they say, good luck. Uh, don't die in the wastes. Hope you have a hospital here to protect you. Be safe. Oh, no. I know these deserts like the back of my hand. I, I'm lying. Um, and Alona steps and goes. Yeah. All right. Um, so you take off well before the hospitaliers and the pilgrims get the chance to. Alone, I'm sure, is doing too fast, too furious. Carriage drift. Everyone give me a perception check. Ooh, hero point. Raygon is, uh, is not very perceptive. That's a 12 for me. Okay, Wes has a 12. You're like, ooh, sand. Um, <laughs> Literally, like, whoa, this is new. <laughs> also, uh, you may hear a point. It's 27. Nice. 29. Okay, and Kylie, what was yours? 25. 25, okay. So as you start going out across... Uh, this beautiful oa- oasis desert, you start seeing mountainsides covered in lush, beautiful trees. And while there's a lot of sand, you're also seeing a lot of uh, vibrant green life and, and little pockets of like rivers and, and streams. Uh, and as you do, the, the sun begins to set. And then you start remember hearing a story in your mind about why the hospitaliers take this pilgrimage every year, sometimes multiple times a year, depending on who can afford them. You remember talking to Tobias about this being one of his key jobs, about why thousands of years ago, almost 10,000 years ago, Minerva had to struggle for almost 14, maybe 18 days straight with her 40 nights to save the origin priests. And then as the sun fades on the horizon, the moon rises in return. That's when you hear it, the horrible sound of shifting sand. Like, like rain through a tube falling, but instead of that delightful sound, it sounds coarse and scratching, like fingers against a chalkboard. And it's then that you see bones pulling themselves out of the sand, skeletons rising from the ground itself hands almost made of of steel claws as fanged skulls just detach and they attack your caravan the perception checks were for your initiative everyone get ready to fight as yay they, i was gonna say as they start approaching the caravan you just see dragon uh, well, after he after after everybody else goes, he notices that there's a fight, and he'd get uh, a big smirk and be like, "Finally, I was getting so bored." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's like everyone is talking, having feelings. It's fighting time now. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's uh, he's got to prove himself. Ah. Absolutely. Okay, so as combat starts off. Once I hear the fight music, we will get rolling with that. Joe? Uh, get rolling. Uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Are we rolling, rolling, rolling down a river? Rolling down a river. The, 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 the river of initiative. Wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Oh, that's sick. Here. I'm just going to. Do a quick poke. Are these sand skeletons? Are they like our size, like like normal people's size? Or are they like big? 
They're small. They do appear to be a good medium-sized skeleton. We got this. Yeah. Enough. Median skeleton size. You know, if you take the average, you discard the outliers. You would. There's Skeleton George, who's 100 feet tall and just really skews the numbers. But he's not here today, so... Or there's a uh, little Larry. Little Larry. <laughs> little Larry. Living like Larry. <laughs> Living like Larry. I like it. I like it. A pocket skeleton. <laughs> oh, Larry the pocket skeleton. <laughs> hey guys. Skeleton. Is it like the little ones that yeah. like hang in your windows like in Halloween? <laughs> this yes. one just pops out of your breast pocket and it's just like, hi. I got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> Oh my oh, god. god. The glorious, it. glorious puns. You get you get a hero point. Alright, and with the sound of combat, we open the gates of battle with Sydney. Sydney. You are flanked all over your caravan by a horde of undead monsters. What do you do? Nerf. Um I'm going to cast that's a great question. Ooh wee! Um, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon, and um, I'm going to attack the closest skeleton uh, with um, my Spiritual Fist. Okay, you summon the Spiritual Fist, and uh, I think you have to roll to hit for that, right? Probably. All right, roll to hit. Ah, uh, it's a nat 20. Jesus. hey all right, out the gate hard. All right, uh, double that wonderful damage. Oh, gee willikers, I sure will. Oh, wow. Oh, gee whiz, Rick. Um, <laughs> that's uh, that's nice. Yeah, I just punch him right in the in the face. Right in the face. It's 15 damage. Just right out the gate, just punch. Good old punch. And I have one action left, so I'm going to use that to tap um, Dragon, who's right next to me, and give him a little guidance to be like, hey, bud, you're going to do great. Um, now you have a plus one uh, status bonus on attack rolls, saving throws, and skill, spell, skill checks. Go get him, tiger. All right. With that sweet little buff, we now turn over to Sam. Sam, it's your turn. What are you going to do? Oh boy. Um, So. One moment. Each sees these skeletons. And. She is going to. Touch the choker that Shionimus just gave her recently and be like. Hmm. And I think it says. For two actions, I can cast Rouse Skeletons. Uh, yes, I believe that's a a summoning a bunch of skeletal hands to attack anyone within a certain area. So I think I'm going to run up to where there's a lot of skeletons and just, like, be like, the power of friendship. And just, and cast Rouse Skeletons to start, like, grabbing at all these other skeletons. All right. Really fast, take a look at that spell so I can tell you, because I think they have to make a save. They do, they have to make a basic reflex save. Okay. The skeleton is very confused. Oof. Uh... Yeah, no, that that's gonna be a critical frail. Um, because they did real bad. And that means they are going to take... 2d6, sorry, 4d6 slashing damage. So, why don't you roll 4d6 slashing uh, damage for me, uh, Sam? I love rolling lots of d6s. It's like my favorite costume. Yeah. Uh, that is 14. Okay. So you call these hands up, they strike all of the undead. Uh, as you say, power of friendship, you do that. You hear like almost like, like, repeating it, the, the hands burst out of the ground and go, 
power of friendship and just start grabbing and clawing at the the skeletons uh equally confused and in pain i believe you have one more action left um for my last action i am going to turn around and wink at shionibus and then turn back around and just be in a fighting stance Okay. Or maybe I'll rage, actually. I'll do that and then rage. <laughs> I like that. So with the wink, it's like, that's my secret, Shonibus. I'm always angry. <sighs> okay, next up, it's the undead skeletons. They are going to go and attack everybody. Um, let's see how bad they're going to get it by trying to move through this 10-foot burst around you. Um... Okay, good. So they, they get to they get to uh, get out okay. So as you rage and, and create this giant almost like cemetery around you, uh, some of them start to try and jump like like high over you and into the caravan. Ooh, okay. Uh, one is going to jump over and attack Sydney. Oh, that's so rude. And. Uh, I, I guess I get to join in this because they're going to critically succeed at attacking Sydney. Ah! Not the healer. They got to kill the healer. Damn it. All right, oh. so that's going to be... You're going to take 20 damage. Ah. And I need you to make a fortitude save. Ah. That's upset, Spaghetto. Um... I got another nat 20. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going I, I swear to God. <laughs> so I'm this- I'm not fired. I, I trust you all. Look, I trust you all. This skeleton leaps over, lands hard, and then just like scratches you. And as it scratches, you can feel like this, this horrible uh, uh, grime in its in your body kind of bubbling and burning and thankfully you're able to fight it off otherwise you would have become drained one gross <laughs> uh and that being said it's going to do one last strike uh against you okay this is going to be does a 20 hit you yeah, okay. okay are you going to take another seven damage and i need one more la uh, one last four you'd save for me Oh man, it's definitely not going to be a nat 20. Um, <laughs> because that would be insane. Um, yeah, it's, ooh. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Well, actually, it's not that bad. Uh, 21. Oh yeah, you succeed. You're fine. Uh, all right, so that being said, I'm going to start doing faster rolls. One's going to uh, attack, basically run with all of his actions and do a charging attack on Dragon. Uh, Dragon, does 25 hit you? It does. All right. You're going to take eight slashing damage, and I need a fortitude save from you. Uh, 18. You are not drained one. You're fine. Uh, one's going to try and attack Shionibus. That's going to be a total of 30. I'm guessing that's a... Is that a crit, though? No, it is not. My AC is 22. Okay, good. Okay, good. So, it's not a crit, but it is a hit. That's going to be 7 damage, and I need a fortitude save out of you. Uh, 25. Okay. You are fine, but you still take that damage. The other two uh, run up with all their uh, turns and attack Sam's character. The first one was a 27. Does that hit you, Sam? It hits. Is that a crit or is it a hit? Um, I don't know what a crit is, and I'm too afraid to ask at this point. <laughs> uh, is it 10 above your AC? What was the number again? Uh, 27. No. Okay, cool. So the other one was a 17. Does a 17 hit you? Yeah, no. Nope. Perfect. Okay, so you're going to take 7 slashing damage and need a fortitude save out of you. Okay. <laughs> is that a nat 20? Oh my god! Oh my god. What is it? What is going on this. tonight? <laughs> Good Not luck, Wes. Bones. Well, it's Wes. <laughs> Wes is the good luck. I love it. Good luck. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll, 
What? Let's see my roll. Oh no. Here's Crossman, it's your turn. Yeah. But next up, it is Kylie. Kylie, what are you gonna do? Uh, so seeing them uh, attacking Alona, she's going to like, because she's wearing the cloak, because she wouldn't have taken it off. Um, she's gonna reach and try to like throw it out, not realizing she's casting Chill Touch. Okay. And it's all of a sudden enough. Oh my god, what was that? Um, would you count that as all three? Is she trying to throw them out? Throw, uh, throw out the, the spell Chill Touch? Uh, the skeleton. Like, she's, like, grabbing um. him and, like, yeet, and then casted Skill Touch without knowing. And she was like, what the? Yeah, athletics check to throw the skeleton and then roll the hit with Chill Touch. Fair point. Uh, I need a fortitude save from okay. All right, I'll make that fortitude save now. That's a 16 for us athletics. That is enough. You are able to basically shove him about five feet off. Um, and what's your, okay, hold on. He's gonna fail the fortitude save. Cool, he's flat footed. Okay. And that it, for one round, and that's it. Perfect. Okay. So he's flat footed. As you basically put your hand on him and shove him away, you see your hand is has left this horrible mark on his skull, and it's just kind of throbbing like a heart would. And he's just very confused and almost robotically rigid. She's just as confused. Uh. All right. So flat footed. Got it. Got it. Wes. You're up, my guy. All right. Uh, so, Dragon is invigorated by like seeing all of his new comrades just absolutely destroying some skeletons. Um, so he's gonna want to impress them. Um, so, with the skeleton nearest uh, the caravan, he's going to swing with uh, both hands to attack one of them and cast uh, Sudden Bolt with Spell Strike. Oh, nice. Okay. And just full force swing at a skeleton. So, uh, all right, here I go for the attack. I'm going to use the hero point. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that is uh, 23. 23 hits. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's... Let me roll my damage here. Yeah. So it's nine from the sword. And then... Oh, wait, I'm rolling the wrong dice. What am I doing? My fault. There it is. Uh, and that's 33 points of uh, lightning damage on so top of that. 33 lightning damage, and the sword was 9? Nine. 9. Did you add your strength modifier to that? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'll make sure. All right. So, so yeah. 42 po total points of damage. Describe for me what just happened. Tell me the tale as you just turned this skeleton to powder. So uh, he sees this one of the skeletons coming up in the caravan, and he literally grips his sword with both hands, channeling the lightning uh, into it, uh, and swings full force straight uh, down into the bottom of its rib cage and up through its head. Uh, and you just watch as lightning shoots from the sword, arcing throughout the sky, and a bolt uh, comes down from it and literally just smashes into the skeleton. As the lightning bolt pounds the earth, the skeleton explodes into a a, a, a a confetti bomb of bones and lands in a charred, skeletal, like charcoal burnt way too long, just kind of powders away. Uh, 
all the other skeletons are going to stop and look directly at Dragon. And you just, he, on his face, he's just got this grin stretching from ear to ear. Uh, he is having a blast right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bring it on! So you hear Morel going, I'm keeping the cart safe. Hello, Lona, you okay? You see Morel, like, making sure the horses don't run off and do anything crazy. And Lona's just staring at what Dragon just did, like, I've never seen someone channel lightning before. Have you seen anyone channel lightning before? I, I mean, I've seen a lot of very powerful wizards do a lot of things, but never with a sword before, no. Lightning sword! Um, Gotta make it your own, right? That's yeah. right. Put your little style on it, mate. All right, top of the next round, Sydney. What are you gonna do? There's one, two, three, four, five skeletons left attacking. Mmm, I hate that. Um, great question. Uh, huh, 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 huh. No one else is really hurt, right? I don't think anyone took damage. I don't think damage. anyone's hurt, except for me. I don't think anyone's hurt, except for me. Um, so at this point in time, I'm going to, uh, ha, ha, ha. I'm going to, wait, should I throw my shoe at it again? I do love throwing my shoe. I do, it's one of my favorite things. Um, but honestly, I think I'm just gonna sustain my uh, my spiritual weapon, um, and I'm going to I'm going to uh, punch another skeleton in the face and try and get it away from me so it stops hurting me because I am squishy and that is bad. All right, let's see. Um. Hold, please. Um, hold for math. Nobody likes math. Um, does a 26 hit? 26 is a crit. Oh, that's great. Wow. All right. Wonderful. Well, then I'm going to double my damage again. Um, beautiful. Let me roll that sweet, sweet D8. Mm -hmm. Roll that wonderful I... pain footage. Yeah. Wait, what? No, don't. Sorry. Oh, okay. I. Oh, yeah! That's pretty dang nice. Wow, would you look at that? Wow. I'm so happy. That's, uh, that's 23 damage. Oh, okay. Right to his big old dumb hit me face. Are you attacking the one that uh, hit you previously? Yes. Okay. Tell me the tale of how you destroy this one with your spiritual weapon. Amazing. I don't feel bad about this because skeleton hurt. Um, so you see uh, the skeleton kind of crawl up on Alona. Alona has gone down for the count because um, because of the strike. And as the skeleton's looming over her, you see just a gigantic fist form behind him. And just as he's about to strike again, the fist just pounds through his skull. It's like a uh huh. Melona kind of coughs and like kind of winces and gets all the dust out of the way. And then she's like, "You don't go for the cleric. That's like ground rules." She gets up. Point of order. I forgot this, so I'm gonna have to do this twice now. But as mm -hmm. you and Dragon kill a skeleton, they seem to have one last little bit of vengeance in their body. Oh, son of a bitch, man. Twenty-nine to hit Dragon. Oh yeah, that hits. 14 to hit Sydney. Uh, does not hit! Nice! Oh, wow! You take 9 damage, Dragon, as as the bones explode into powder, one of them reaches out to you and just gets one last strike at you and then just vanishes in the in the air, uh, the night air, just kind of lifts, wafts away. Uh, as, mm -hmm. you, as you punch through the head, Alona, you see the body, the skeleton kind of like a chicken walking around. And it's kind of swinging wildly, trying to get its bearings. And it takes one last mm -hmm. strike at you, and then falls, and then the bone just kind of... And then Amazing. clatter to the base of the carriage. With my final action, I'm going to use command. Um, whichever skeleton I use to command... Actually, can, it, can I target more than one? I believe it should be in the description of the spell. It might have to be at uh, higher levels. Yeah. 
I'm gonna target one of the skeletons. Is there one that's attacking Ichi or Shino? Who's attacking who? Well, two are attacking Ichi for now. I believe one is attacking um, Shionibus and mm -hmm. uh, one is probably on the way to attack Dragon. I'm going to command the one that's attacking Shionibus to freeze. Okay. All right, I'm gonna make the will save against your command. What's the DC? Um, the DC is 22. 22. All right. Well, that's not good in the die face. Yeah. He, um... Okay, this is critically fail, but he does fail. Okay. Um, so he has to do my command, like, for his next action. Okay. Nice and done. Next up, we have Sam. So, uh, Ichi's raging, and she's gonna smash a skeleton. Ichi smash. I believe you were hit, so the revenge rune should have activated. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what that one is. 25. 25 to hit. That'll be a crit. Heck yeah. All right, so we got... 2d12s. Strength. The rune is a plus two, right? Mm-hmm. 19 points of damage. Is that before <gasps> you double it or after you've doubled it? Oh, it's a crit. I did not double it yet. So okay. that's before. Okay. So... Tell me the tale of how you, with a mighty swing, destroy the skeleton. Ichi feels pretty rock and roll right now. She's got a very cool uh, Bad Bitch Vibes collar on. Uh, and she raised these skeletons that are like on at their other skeleton friends. Um, so I think she just takes the hammer out and in a very slow motion, banner swings it around and is just like ah, smashes it through and it bursts like um toothpicks just falling down and uh as you see the toothpicks of the skeleton falling down the hands are like waving like she's at a concert <laughs> and the confetti's coming down as they're waving like they're at a concert they're like yeah but then the skull opens up its mouth and tries to bite you one last time before it hits the sand. Does a 27 hit you? Yes. All right. You're going to take 10 slashing damage as the teeth kind of gets caught on your skin and drags on the way down with gravity. The skull clatters to the sand and then just turns into dust and vanishes. They all want a piece of me. Just they gonna do. go for a second attack on the next near skeleton. Okay. And that's a um, minus five? Uh, yes, minus five on this hit. I'm gonna use a hero point for that one. I think I've at least two right now. Um, Twenty-one. Twenty-one will hit. Not quite a dirty crit, so go ahead and roll damage. Twenty-two points of damage. Twenty-two points of damage. Okay. Surprisingly, still up, but it is not looking good. Now, you have the Rouse Skeleton's uh, spell active. Do you want to use your last action to maintain that spell? Yes. Awesome. Then they all have to make a reflex save. They, they freaking don't. Uh, so I want you to go ahead and roll for me another 4d6. Boy, howdy. Well, okay. So, as the one you crash through that's still standing uh, kind of looks at you and gets ready to fight uh, again, suddenly one of the claw hands just comes up, makes the rock and roll horns, sticks them right in the skeleton's eyes, and then just drags him into the earth. As he goes down to the dirt, he's going to try one last strike to kill you and will miss horrendously, so don't worry about that. Ichi just kicks the skull into the into the crowd. <laughs> Goes off in the crowd. 
of this empty ball? oasis, like a beach ball. You can see like little spirits, like just knocking it back and forth. Like, yeah, get up in the air. Uh, <laughs> all right, with that, next up is the blue skeletons that are still alive. Well, you know, alive being relative. So, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so the one that uh, attacks Yonibus is going to try and attack her again. That's a 24 um, to you. It is flat-footed, though. It is. Is it also frozen? Uh, no, the frozen one was a different target. Oh, this is a new one. Yeah. Got it. At this point. Okay. So 24 does hit you. Yes. Okay. 10 slash damage. Give me a fortitude save. 22. 22. Okay. You are not drained. You still take that 10 slashing damage. Uh, it's going to try to attack you uh, one more time. Now 15 is going to miss. That's going to be the end of its turn. And last but not least, the one that is frozen. You said freeze. And you see this one kind of stuck in place. <laughs> and then, then suddenly it kind of stops. And it moves. And it can't do anything else. And if it turns, <laughs> it moves closer to Dragon. Being said, next up is Kylie. Kylie, you have the flat footed one in front of you that just attacked you, and the one that's trying to attack Dragon. What are you going to do? Cool. Uh, if you will allow me, I want to do kind of a really cool. And you can tell me how many actions this will take. I want to literally, like, kick him out of the caravan and then dock an arrow and, like, fire. Because I don't want to take a penalty for being so close to him. Yeah, sure. Uh, give me an athletics check to knock him back one action, and that's enough. Cool. Nat 20. <laughs> what? So yeah, you Sparta kick this skeleton. He just goes flying back. I'll even say roll me a 1d4 plus strength just for some damage. Why not? Sweet. Uh, 1d4 plus strength, you said? Mm-hmm. That's a two. Okay, two to two. Perfect. Okay, so he's knocked back. You can see one of his rib bones, uh, rib cage bones, just kind of cracked and broken inward. And he's just kind of slowly writing himself. So what do you do with the other two actions that you have? I am hitting. Yeah, I'll hit him while he's like not yet falling. Just midair, just fucking hawkeyeing it. Can I do better? Uh, I have one hero point left. Let's see if I can do better. You can do better. Cool. Uh, that is going to be a 30 to hit. Well, that's a dirty crit. It absolutely is a dirty crit. Good. Double all the damage, my friend. Sick. I love it here. And don't you have like Hold a on. bonus for when you crit? Like a special thing? Yeah. I do. I do. Uh, that's going to be 6 D8s. Uh, 4 D4s. Holy! Or oh, sorry, four d sixes. My bad. Uh, and two d fours, and a d ten. And don't forget, I think you now get to add your dexterity bonus for damage with your ring. So you know, just yeah. Give me that all the pain. Why not? Yeah. Come right there. Come right there. Okay. Okay. Give me a second. That's a lot of math. That is 31 damage. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. He's powder uh, now, right? Yeah, I uh, I, I want you to tell me the tale of how you completely killed this guy. He's too far so, away to attack you. after she just like Spartan kicks him out of this caravan, she just like kind of like closes one eye, tracks 
leans to the side a little, adjusts, fires. He's like, you're not supposed to be here. So you fires. kick him in the air, turn it, kind of adjust sideways. You're not supposed to be here. Let it go. And yet, as he lands, like just before his feet can touch, his skull just cracks in half as the arrow breaks right through, punches right through his, his skeleton uh, noggin. And sure enough, he just turns to dust once more and leaves into the night air. Last but not least, I think you have one more action, right? I have one more action. I'm going to turn, and then the one that attacked me that turned to Dragon, I'm going to hit that one. Okay. Oh! <gasps> Is it? I kid you not, that's a nat 20. What, what is happening? I kid you not. Yes. I don't know what's going on anymore. Wes, Wes is good luck. Oh. Knocking on the Yay. You have to start throwing more <laughs> dragons at you. Shit. No, no, wait. Hey, 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 hey. I know. Hey, hey now. Hey, now. Listen. <laughs> uh... We're just, you know. We're enjoying it. Oh, let us have this. <laughs> let us have this. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Too many D8s. Too many dice, too many dice. Too many dice, too many dice. That's 58 damage. 50 what? Damage. I got a lot of max. <laughs> max is on that one. I love so this. much. Are you are you <laughs> marking your targets with as your core? No. No. Oh my god! No. It could get worse. It could get worse. Love it. Okay, hold on. Okay. So, as you hit this creature and take it down to negative 38. HP. I want you to tell me the tale, Shionibus, of how you end the combat and kill the last skeleton. So, she's like, trying to keep track of how many there are. So she's like, six, seven. And just before it just gets straight to Dragon's, like, face, there's an arrow that just throws straight through the neck, and points out just like inches from dragon she's like got him <laughs> got him uh just out of curiosity is cursing allowed yeah oh i've been swearing all game okay yeah. because dragon's gonna look right at chi and just go that was so fucking cool it is unreal you kicked him out the back and then shot him with an arrow and then you shot this one that was about to that was awesome. That was, that's what thousands of years of training will do for you right there. No, it's no big deal. No, no. big deal. No, it was a big deal. That was, that was awesome. It was so cool. He's right. I want to was... learn how to do that. But that choker I gave you, Ichi, that's cool. Fucking cool. That was cool. Skeleton concert. Got... Oh no. Is there any more? <laughs> As you look around the caravan, uh, you seem to have survived tonight's horrible test of your metal and courage. As the wastes of this beautiful oasis, or I should say the sand of this beautiful oasis, just kind of seems to settle and simmer. And in the night sky, the dark, charred dust of the skeletons just wafts into a memory as the moon guides you to a good camping position. And as you go to bed for the night and get ready for your first campfire together, this is where we're going to end episode 14, season two of Edge of Legend. It was fun. It was funny. I loved it. And I want to say thank you so much to Wes. I can't wait uh, for next week. And for those watching, uh, we're going to be joined by another new and amazing player next week, May 4th. We're going to be having Randy show up, Randy Alav uh, Alvarenga, and I cannot wait to introduce their character to you. It's going to be so much fun. So much fun. 
But now we're going to say our goodbyes because it is that time starting off with the returning princess of pain, I think. I don't I don't have a good name for you yet, Shionibus. Uh Kylie, please, Kylie, tell us who you are and where we can find you on the sweet, sweet internet. Hi there, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kai, it really doesn't matter at this point. You can find me at Kai's Wonderful Life all over the internet, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm not sure 100% if I will be here next week. This is kind of just a spontaneous, I had nothing to do and I was feeling great. Uh, I hope I'm here next week. We'll see how <laughs> the tiredness is. Uh, but if I'm not, you can come visit me at the Irwindale Original Pleasure Fair. Uh, where it's this amazing renaissance fair and I'm part of this amazing cast this year. Uh, so if you're around in Southern California, please come check it out. Original Renaissance Pleasure Fair. Uh, it is our 60th anniversary and we have been on hiatus for about two years now. Uh, so it's really great to come back and everything. And it's amazing. Also, if you come Saturday, it's May Day weekend. So make sure you bring flowers and I might be uh, reading something on stage. So come check it out. Yay! Next up, Sam, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet, Sam. Well, hello, I'm Sam Sterling and uh, I play Ichi. Oh, wait, now it's the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me all over the internet at Hey Sam Sterling. Um, and I'm quickly trying to find the details of something coming up. Because I'm yeah. date and time. Yes! Okay, so. Game Day 2022, Saturday, May 14th, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Disaster Hamsters. I I mean, how can you not with that name? I'm going to play a Disaster Hamster over on uh, the Creators Assemble Network. So uh, just check me out on Twitter. I'll be posting about it. Or you can check out uh, Creators Assemble on Twitter or here on Twitch. And I can't wait. I... I feel like a disaster hamster like 85% of the time. So this will just be fulfilling my destiny. I hope you can join me. Oh man, that sounds awesome. I cannot wait to see that. Uh, well, next up, Sydney, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hello, my name is Sydney Rubino. You can find me all over the internet at Sydney Rubino. That is TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, when I'm not here on on uh, on tonight, um, uh, I don't have any regular streams right now. I have a few special things coming up, like tomorrow at 3 p.m. PST, 6 p.m. EST, I am going to be on the Life Action Role Play channel playing Savage Sisters. It's going to be a special episode where we play basically Red Sonia and, uh, you know, She-Ra and all those big powerful lady types we're going to be playing live on stream so that's going to be really fun we're going to be building our characters and you can kind of see a new um a really interesting gaming system and uh it's an all you know female centered sort of sort of stream so if you like that come join me tomorrow at 3 p.m psd on life action role play please do it i'll be there you're playing a badass lady which is my favorite thing ever. Wonderful. My, my favorite thing, too. Uh, that being said, though, let's take it to another badass lady. Wes, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. I'm, it was dumb. I thought it'd be fun. No, I, I loved it. Okay, darling, it's fine. Oh, gunny uh, bunny. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I'm at Wes underscore IRL and all of the things. Uh, if you want to see more of my stuff, you can actually see a show where PJs in my positions are reversed. I am the dungeon master, and he is one of my pl lovely players on a D&D show, Yeet for Initiative. Uh, Fridays, it won't, we won't be on this week, but the following week for sure, um, on my Twitch channel. So uh, join us there. And uh, guys, this was a freaking blast, and I'm so excited to be joining you. Uh, this was great. I cannot wait for the adventure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> God. Um, uh, thank you for, for saying yes, and also huge shout out to uh, Kylie for this wonderful surprise. I hope that we uh, get to see you as much as possible. Um, that being said, go to Irwin uh, Fair, see her, she's awesome. Go see Sam do the thing, she's amazing. Go see Sydney do the same thing, she's amazing. And Wes, amazing. 
My name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGaw. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Come find me, confront me, and let's have fun. When I'm not here with these legends, Wednesdays, 8 to 11 p.m., you can find me here Mondays, 8 to 11 p.m. for Wayward Arcadium. Uh, next week coming up is The Big Ask. With the big semester dance around the corner, all of the students have to find out who they're going to be dancing with at the big event. Uh, that being said, uh, so tune into that and see what happens from there. Uh, like Wes said, nothing happened this Friday. I believe tomorrow, though, um, we are Queen's Court Games on Twitch is going to be showing the next episode of Cult, K-U-L-T, uh, and I'll be in that as well, playing Ralph, the uh, internet troll now stuck in a cosmic horror. So tune in. I forgot the time. I'm ter- Oh my God, I'm horrible for, for forgetting the time. But look on their Twitter. The Twitter will tell you. Uh, and I'll try to pop in and, and, and the chat and talk to you as we're doing the thing. And if you can't see me, please go see Sydney and Sam and everyone else. Um, I think that's it for now. Uh, love you all. Great to see everyone in the chat. Penku Chan, love you. Great seeing Bearded Skull in the chat. Mahooch, Shem Jenkins, Tori Novel, uh, Oive, it's Rachel. Queen's Court Games, there you are. Uh, everyone else, love you all. We're going to be raiding Captain Charlie Foxtrot because I think took, I guess, stopped or already raided, but we're going to be raiding anyway. So Captain Charlie Foxtrot is doing a D&D game. We're going to go and say hi. What should our rating call be? What should we say as we raid? New friends? New friends? Nat 20s all around. Nat yeah, twi- yeah, there we go. That's I think better. The, I think they're in the middle of combat, so that's just the right amount of trolling we need to throw them off. So everyone shout, Nat 20s all around when we go inside. And we're going to be raiding in three, two, one.